Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for uh, coming back to the uh, MAG meeting. Uh, we had a very intensive work yesterday. We need to go through uh, remaining uh, workshop proposals that need to be discussed in order to uh, in order to uh, balance out uh, the program. Uh, yesterday we uh, agreed to retain uh, 79 workshops and the uh, Secretariat circulated the list of those workshops uh, uh, last night. The same uh, Secretariat circulated list of remaining uh, sessions that we need to go through and they are 30. Uh, I intend to uh, go through them uh, in the morning that we can, uh, during uh, lunchtime, assess where we are and uh, make a uh, one before final list uh, that we could circulate during lunchtime. And then uh, in the after at the beginning of the afternoon session, we would finalize selection of the workshops. And then we would go to uh, another uh, uh, remaining items on the agenda, that is uh, intersessional, uh, sorry, um, dynamic coalitions, uh, interregional uh, uh, IGFs, um, uh, next steps. Uh, we will circulate uh, in about an hour uh, the uh, proposal for the for main sessions, uh, which is based on uh, your inputs and uh, uh, further technical considerations that I already mentioned yesterday. Uh, about uh, uh, opening uh, ceremony and opening uh, opening session, uh, and hopefully by uh, six o'clock today we will have uh, accomplished everything we uh, wanted to accomplish by then. Uh, also, uh, I understand that uh, coordinators of uh, intersessional uh, work stream on next billion. Uh, we'll circulate in, in a few minutes uh, the new version of the document, uh, which uh, uh, will encompass all the, all the discussions or, or advice that we were giving uh, to coordinators yesterday. And uh, I was also asked to say if any of MAG members have any suggestions to, to the, uh, this document, then please do it directly with Constance and the team. Uh, intention is to uh, send out uh, to wider community this document maybe tonight or over weekend. Uh, that we can really uh, launch uh, these intersessional activities uh, as soon as, as we can. Uh, in parallel, Secretariat uh, also will be reaching out uh, all national regional IGFs uh, seeking their uh, confirmation uh, whether they are in or out, whether they will uh, do this uh, reflection and will contribute to the document or not. Uh, and hopefully uh, sometime uh, in one of the, our next conference calls, uh, we will have a very good uh, picture uh, where we are with intersessional work. I hope that this uh, uh, proposal, how we uh, structure day, is acceptable. I see no requests. Body language says that we are close to exhaustion uh, and we'll proceed uh, as I suggested. Uh, German, you had a question. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, German Valdez. Uh, just a question, uh, you mentioned, um, you mentioned uh, next steps uh, is, we will in that includes um, discussion about the next MAC meeting? How you know? <laughs> yes, indeed. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. Um, morning, Mr. Chairman. Thank you to the Secretariat for circulating the information this morning. I requested one more piece of information, if they could circulate that, which is uh, 
apart from the four charts, the one on stakeholder origination, because that is one of the key objectives that was identified yesterday for this intervention that we were making since yesterday afternoon. So it will help to know whether we've made actual improvement or changes in where we stood at top 60 as we go towards top 80, uh, which is 70 plus, um, I think the sector uh, mentioned 10 uh, under the provisionally retained list. So if you could see that. So we can't see the numbers, so if somebody can help with the numbers. Or, or if you could just send it to us, then. It was sent last night. It's, um, yes. Just the graphs. Just the pie chart. Oh, in the Excel. Mm -hmm. Chart. This pie chart is not. There are four pie charts, but not this. In the Excel sheet. I sent another Excel sheet. And just. We have now, um, let, let me also explain that there, there were a couple of workshops uh, missing from those, from the list we examined yesterday, and uh, uh, now everything is put back. We have, uh, we need to start with the um, uh, with workshop uh, 212, uh, which is ranked one, uh, 119, oh, no, sorry, 11, workshop 11. Uh, yes, Netherlands, please. Arnon. Thank you, Chair Janis, and good morning to all. Uh, my name is Arnold uh, van Rijn. My last name is spelled V-A-N-R-H-I-J-N. And I'm speaking here as an observer in my capacity as representative of NLIGF. Before Mac continues its valuable work on selecting the workshops, I would like to ask you about the ranking of two proposals NLIGF has sent in as a co-production with other foreign organizations. Uh, the two proposals I'm referring to are ranked on the website of the IGF as number 24, titled Privacy as Innovation, Part 3, and number 48. know whether the two NLIGF proposals are among those 60 proposals or will they maybe turn up during this election today or are they not in the race anymore and if so why not again it concerns the proposals number 24 and 48 and chair so I would like to, to ask you uh, could you please uh, shed some light on this darkness so I can report back to the NLF uh, community thank you very much So thank you very much for question. Uh, we're now checking. Well, while we're checking, uh, while Chengita is checking, um, you know, to answer the uh, request, uh, can we go to the uh, workshop 11? Virat? <coughs> I think the gentleman said ranked 24th and 48th. Would that mean just serial numbers or would that mean ranks? 
I think yeah, that's just the ID. It's a serial number, okay, yeah. thanks. I know you have a question. and 58 on board and maybe merged. Thank you. So thank, thank you. Um, any other comments? Um, Mark? Yes, thank you, Chair, and good morning, everybody. Yes, I, I agree with uh, Anna Nevish um, that this does um, bring uh, an issue to the IGF. So the, in terms of thematic balance, uh, there is a case for it. Uh, it's a very strong proposal on open educational resources, and uh, uh, as, as the description there points out, um, there's clear linkage to sustainable development. Um, if there is an opportunity to um, to merge, uh, perhaps that option should should be explored as well. So, uh, generally, as I as I commented on the evaluation, strongly support this as a as a valuable contribution to the IGF uh, on sustainable development. Thank you. So, thank you, Murad. Thank you, Chair, and good morning to all. I just concur with the previous speakers, um, and I just to uh, to look for the possibilities to merge the two uh, uh, proposals because there is, uh, um, I guess, a string, uh, a strong link between them, and there is, um, as it is shown in uh, proposal 11, uh, a strong uh, link with um, the MDGs, and also maybe uh, the organizers uh, should be advised to. Uh, to make a link also with uh, the upcoming um, uh, post development development goals for uh, post 2015. Thank you. So thank you very much, uh, Michael. You are in agreement, right? Strongly in agreement, but only if we tell both sides that they must merge and they will not be accepted unless they work together. So thank you very much. I see that this is our wish. We would retain uh, workshop 11. And we would advise uh, that this is merged with workshop 58. And as a result, we are not examining any longer uh, workshop 58. Uh, uh, 135. 135 national and tra uh, transnational internet governance jurisdiction, ranked uh, 83, who is, who is uh, speaking, Flavia? So this, this uh, proposal goes with a very important uh, question, which is the, the jurisdiction of uh, uh, resources and uh, internet governance uh, institutions. Uh, in fact, you know, this is a very strong centralized in some countries, and the aim of this uh, workshop is uh, to discuss this issue. Uh, as an example, it takes the IANA transition and the possibility that, that the new framework to be developed for, for the IANA uh, supervision could be made more international. 
uh, and this is very timely uh, since we are discussing this uh, IANA transition now. Uh, so I think this is uh, a very important issue that uh, I don't remember if another workshop from the already retained uh, discusses this issue. So thank you, Marilyn. Thank you, Chair. I just have a clarifying question. Um, that is, uh, could ICANN tell us what their open forum topic is so that we can take that into account if there is direct overlap? So thank you, Michael. I actually rank this quite low because we've had sessions like this in previous years. We've had open forum or side meetings on this topic. Um, I don't think there's a lot new here. Um, I do think that some of the other sessions could benefit by having some of the participants proposed for this session inserted in there, but I, I, I don't think this merits uh, a separate session because it does duplicate things we've done in previous years and discussions we'll have in other, other workshops. So thank, thank you, Virat. I would support this um, proposal, Mr. Chairman. It is um, relevant. It is current. It is dealing with issues that are currently under discussion. Um, it is directly related to some of the issues that, um, if it doesn't go through, would impact the whole discussion on enhanced cooperation, which is going to be one of the st issues that actually um, will be used as a jockeying point against uh, the IGF extension. This is very much at the core of what we are this year. I think the speakers are very strong, um, and uh, it was uh, ranked quite high. And so for all those reasons, um, and I think it has a very good spread of speakers, um, um, including some MAC members, who I know can't speak up for this, but uh, I would certainly speak up and say uh, we should certainly have this session. <coughs> So thank you very much. Uh, seems that we have. Uh, do, do we have ICANN representative uh, to, to answer a question of Maryland's? Please, Bayer. Um, thank you, Chairman. So the um, the ICANN Open Forum um, usually covers um, uh, issues um, that, like recent developments and recent updates in relation to ICANN work. Um, we, we haven't we haven't got the um, exact agenda of the open forum set yet. Uh, however, we expect that a topic like you know IANA transition will certainly be on the agenda. Thank you. So thank you, uh, Marilyn. Do you uh, yes? Can thank answer you. Now? Oh. Thank you, Chair. Well, I guess I'd like us then to. Um, take into account uh, Mike's suggestion that there it, it is a timely topic. There are many people who um, have um, who will uh, be interested in it. Uh, I certainly agree with that. Um, I just want to. We have limited space, and we have many important topics and workshops that we're not going to be able to include. So where we can, I want to avoid duplication. Um, and that's the purpose of my asking the question. If the IANA transition and accountability is going to be the subject of a 90-minute open forum, then I would really be careful about having a lot of additional workshops. Um, that are uh, parallel opportunities to look at the same topic. So thank you. Benedicto? Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to offer some comments here uh, as well. Uh, first of all, I think from the point of view of uh, government, this is a matter of utmost interest. I think if we are trying to balance, it is uh, a point which my government and others think are, is very important. Although this, in a way, is included in the discussion on accountability, it must be acknowledged this is not uh, a topic, a major topic for discussion. It's not on the table. It's not being thoroughly discussed. So we think this would be an opportunity at IGF to, to have some reflection on this, to shed some light on this issue. 
which in previous years, in previous, uh, in the past, was under discussion within uh, ICANN and other, but is not anymore. Uh, so we think the argument that it was there in previous IGFs, uh, in a way, does not hold because the historical moment we are living is completely different from what we had before, and there are new elements, and particularly the, the time frame in which we are working towards preparing the proposal for a transition, which is, uh, increases the interest in, from the perspective of government to have that kind of discussion uh, now. So we would uh, certainly uh, think it does not duplicate in anything something that is already there, because even though there will be discussions, uh, related discussions, the emphasis will not certainly be on that topic. And, and we think this is an important issue that was discussed before, but would benefit from having updated uh, uh, discussion in the light of uh, recent developments. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. I actually support this workshop as well, but I wanted to make a distinction that I think the primary focus of this is the question on jurisdiction, not the IANA transition. So if the, if the workshop stays with that focus, um, I think that would actually bring a new element into the discussion. And I was trying to find in the background, there is another IANA transition section which had all of the operating communities and the leaders of that participating in that. I'm not sure if that's made it into our number here or not, but that would be an appropriate place to really look through the IANA transition from the operating communities and have this workshop focus on more on the question of jurisdiction. So thank you very much. It seems that there is a support uh, for retention of, of this uh, uh, proposal on the merit uh, and, and uh, on, the, on the topic, um, uh, which, is, uh, which is unique. Uh, the jurisdiction topic. So can we, can we move on? Uh, I would like to, to see all flags down when we start new, new topic. Uh, 212, engaging youth in internet governance, a principal dialogue. Uh, who will speak about it? Do we have youth in the room? I, re I, re I recall last time. <laughs> 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 I, re I recall at the end. I recall at the end of the previous meeting, uh, uh, we, we were really uh, encouraged to bring more young people in the in the room. And um, so, please, who is who is uh, making the, the case? Okay, I'm not the one who made the case, but I would support it. Um, though uh, I know I'm on the panel, so I think the person who made the case would go ahead, but just wanted to say thank you for bringing the three of us, Bianca, Ida, and I on board. Uh, and uh, yeah, let the person support, the person who proposed it. Uh, Juan? Thank you, Chairman. I did not uh, propose that, but well, I could because well, we are all young here. But as I said before, uh, this is a topic in child and youth issues that has more workshop proposal over 15. So uh, I think that this is a topic that in some place of the IGF should be addressed. I don't know whether in an open forum or in a main session or in a workshop, but I think this, uh, that we should accommodate this youth uh, vision of internet uh, governance someplace in, in the forum. Thank you. So thank you. We have a remote participant. Yes, we actually have two. First is Bianca. Bianca, please go ahead. It seems that she has some problems. Um, uh, the second is Subi. So please, Subi. Thank 
you. I hope I'm audible. I very strongly wish to articulate my support for the workshop. It allows us to bring more young people into the room as participants. Uh, however, I did have a comment. If we can improve on speaker diversity and get some more young people from different regions, especially one or two other developing countries, this would make for a fantastic session. Um, so strong articulation of support for revival of the workshop. Thank you. And uh, just to add, uh, uh, Bianca said that she cannot speak, but she supports this proposal. So, uh, thank you, Brazil. Uh, only to mention that Brazil is working together with some other entities to bring between 100 and 120 young people from all over the world. There will be a focus on Latin Americans. We already have some support to bring probably uh, from Latin America 50 to 80, but some other from Asia and Europe also will join the project for a strong youth participation. So thank you, Jack. Thanks. Um, I just want to start by saying that I strongly support greater youth participation into the IGF and have scored accordingly. Um, however, this workshop I thought was very similar in terms of the content focus as well as speakers um, to workshop 191, which was already in the top 60 and accepted. So I'm maybe also seeking clarification in terms of what's the difference, in terms of the focus. And I thought that workshop 191 was also much better um, developed, I suppose. So can we have 191 on the screen, please? Uh, in the meantime, Segun. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think it's about time for us to encourage our youth participation in the IGF. I remember in, at the national level in my country, whenever we have national internet governance forum, we, we, we usually have a day separated for youth engagement. And if you look at the people that we have here, we have a very negligible uh, representative number of uh, youth. So I think uh, this topic, I'm supporting it. And I hope uh, at the end of the day, it will lead us to have a uh, youth ambassador that will probably promote IGF. Thank you. So thank you very much. I was. I, I see that there is a there is a, a overwhelming support to the theme. That's that's. I, I accept that. But uh, if we're uh, reminding ourselves about the topic and why we're doing this exercise to balance out and to bring. Uh, uh, ne necessary un underrepresented uh, issues on, on the table. I, now I see that uh, there, are, uh, there are two more uh, workshops which are accepted already with a very similar uh, titles. One is on the screen, 191, uh, Engaging Youth in Multi-Stakeholderism Practicum, and then there is another one, 1115 which also is accepted already. So on that, basi on that basis, I would like to put this for the moment on maybe list, uh, because uh, uh, we need to see uh, wh whether all, all balances are right um, at, at the end of this exercise. I hope this, this, will be this is acceptable. Thank you. Uh, shall we move to 259? Birat? As a matter of process, Mr. Chairman, we're down to, we will very quickly down to proposals that are supported by one member or two members. I think it will help to identify who put the proposal on the list because it's difficult uh, when you call out names and nobody kind of puts their hand up on who put the list and then kind of other people have to jump in to support this. And it's also difficult by way of process, just as you pointed out. We don't remember those two because, you know, they were read two weeks ago. So I think it's important that the ones who put the, uh, the proposal on the list should read out the reasons why they're doing it so the others can gravitate around that. Thank you. No, no, certainly. That if, if there is no promoter or supporter of the, of the uh, workshop, we're not examining it. Uh, we, we dealt already with one, 150, uh, sorry, with the 58. Uh, two, 259 is the next.
259, an observatory of web accessibility, the case of Portugal. Who is, who is uh, speaking, introducing? Anna? Thank you. Well, um, I didn't score this workshop, of course, because it uh, is from Portugal, so I had a conflict of interests, but now it's, it's time for me to speak, I think. Um, it's a flash session. We are talking about a 30-minute session. And um, maybe the most of you uh, don't know, but Portugal is uh, really advanced on, on this topic, uh, which is key for digital inclusion and, uh, and the social inclusion as well. And uh, a lot has, has to be done. So due to the importance of the theme, and uh, to the fact that we don't have so many, uh, so, so many uh, workshops on this uh, theme, um, I, I would like to ask to, to have this uh, flash session included on the, on the IGF of this year. Um, besides, um, it's, it says the case of Portugal, but the, actually the interest is to, to act as a multiplier. Thank you. So thank you very much. That, that would uh, balance participation of governments uh, directly. 30-minute uh, session, uh, Susan. Yes, I'd just like to support this. I think it's um, an excellent example of how the flash session format can be used. And also, it's great to see that um, the government's using this format to uh, support. Uh, thank you, Virat. I was going to support it for the balance of the stakeholder group. Thank you. Uh, remote participation. OK, so B, please go ahead. propose that we retain this as a, as a flash session uh, to improve participation of the governments. Uh, 2.56. 256 Web Accessibility and Internet Governance. Okay. Anna. I'm sorry, again. Well, but it's about uh, web accessibility again so I have to defend this theme I think it's uh, uh, it's really important I think this uh, workshop is uh, very well um, organized so I really support it thank you uh, how, how that how that uh, improve the balance this is civil society theme which is uh, oversubscribed and uh, relatively low scored 177 ranking in the in the overall scoring i have no argu i didn't hear any argument why why should we examine a part that this is a is a good good proposal we have 240 good proposals mark yes thank you chair I, i'm doubtful about this um as I understand it, it's not entirely clear. Um, it's about uh, access for uh, people with disabilities, and this is is covered in other proposals. So um, uh, I don't see a balancing issue here. Um, so I, I put this in the question questionable category. Uh, thank you. Thank, thank you, Marilyn. I. Um also would put it in the questionable category, but would suggest that as there's a um, um, session being organized on accessibility, that the organizers should be, uh, they should be referred to uh, collaborate with that, uh, that additional um, group, because I think they, um, they certainly could contribute there. So thank you. Thank you, Hassan. Yes, thank you, Chair. Well, um, I agree as well with Madeline, and uh, I think that uh, even the speakers were not contacted at all. Uh, 
Um, we have a dynamic coalition for accessibility. So I think that uh, maybe joining this, uh, bringing this to merge with other uh, would be better. Thank you. So thank you very much. I, I feel that there is no sufficient support, no, no balancing uh, uh, action, and the uh, remote participant will confirm that. Uh, it's Bianca, and she suggested that the web accessibility workshop will be merged with the Portugal one to share the best practices. So we, we, we would advise, we would not retain it in this category and we would advise uh, the organizers or proponents of this workshop to contact others and, and then uh, seek a possibility of bringing this topic uh, in other workshops. Uh, thank you. 153. Uh, Michael? Uh, just to be clear, I, I, I would oppose the suggestion that was just made that we suggest they talk to the Portugal flash session. It would be very hard to add more people into a 30-minute session. But there is another very useful web accessible, couple of web, web accessibility sessions where they could contribute. So thank, thank you. I did not mention Portugal. Uh, one, 153, freedom expression online, gaps in policy and practice. Who is promoting? Uh, Sita, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, as I mentioned yesterday, I have two reasons to retain this proposal. First is for geographic balance for Southeast Asia. There is not much proposal from this region, perhaps around 10 from the total 267. Secondly, because this is a case of freedom of expression, which is very much relevant and necessary to bring into the IGF discussion. One of the cases that happening currently is from Malaysia, and one of the speakers is also coming from Malaysia. My suggestion for this workshop is to add more government representative in the sessions. Uh, they currently have a Deputy Privacy Commissioner from New Zealand, but I would like to recommend more uh, government representative from Southeast Asia. Thank you, sir. So, th thank you. Michael? Uh, I strongly endorse this proposal. I did not nominate it as one, but uh, I ranked it very highly, partly because of the geographic uh, diversity, partly because this was a, a very hot issue in Istanbul, and people were upset that we didn't spend more time on this freedom of expression topic. Um, so I uh, strongly urge that we include it as written. So thank, thank you, Mark. Thanks, yes. Um, yes, it is an important topic. Um, I read this as focusing on uh, indicators. So I, I was concerned about the format and, you know, 90 minutes primarily on uh, reporting um, this work on indicators, I thought would be too much, taking up too much valuable time. Uh, it would complement um, IGF uh, discussions on this vitally important uh, topic, uh, generally freedom of expression. So I, I uh, advocated uh, a shorter session, perhaps even uh, 30 minutes, to present on the indicators, and then that would feed across uh, to uh, other key main sessions on this topic. Thank you. So thank you, uh, Virat. Um, I would support this uh, session, even though it does add to the thematic imbalance and somewhat to the stakeholder imbalance further. It's very highly scored. And uh, I think it has a strong uh, mix of developing country notions. So I think it's worth retaining if we are short on space. I mean, 71 ranking is, is quite high by base of where we had a cutoff. So I think uh, it both on merits and the mix that it provides uh, and some very strong speakers. Um, perhaps a little less time, but I think we should certainly retain this, uh, this proposal. It, it does go against uh, the activity that is currently underway, which is to balance. But even then, I think this needs to be supported. But I, I hear that there is a con uh, sort of argument that this is a regional balance because we have Southeast Asia uh, focus, and, and um, that is underrepresented. Avri, are you in agreement? Yes, I'm in agreement, but I'm not in agreement with shortening it. Thank you. So then, then you made a, 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 a proposal that uh, everybody else is uh, supporting. 
we retain this uh, workshop and uh, Subi is very happy about it. Um, it's, uh, <laughs> it's too well actually and uh, she's supporting this session, uh, she scored it highly and uh, says that it is a relevant topic. And Subi is also supporting. So thank you very much. Uh, we retain it uh, because of uh, geographic representation and uh, high score uh, uh, in, in, in general. So we have retained proposal 21 uh, yesterday and uh, we're moving now to 151. Hate and discriminatory speech and freedom of expression online. Scored 76. Michael? Uh, this was one that I did nominate for retention because uh, uh, hate speech is a, a very important topic, but many of the sessions that we've had in previous uh, IGFs have just taken one side of the issue and said hate speech is bad, how do we stop it, and not brought in the free speech advocates who will argue that too much constraint on, free, on hate speech can actually stifle freedom of expression. I thought this was a very well-balanced panel. It was rate, rated very highly, and uh, uh, I think it would be rated even higher uh, had we, if we did the assessment today, because there aren't a lot of sessions on hate speech uh, that ended up getting high approval. So I, I strongly endorse we take this. Mark. Yes. Uh, I uh, strong support for this. Um, in, um, we've just had a Council of Europe uh, conference in Brussels on this topic. It's it's high on government's agendas, and um, uh, it's important that the IGF provides a real opportunity for this issue to be explored and next steps to be identified. And I, the proposal is very well constructed in that regard. So I think this is a thematic balancing uh, issue here uh, we should we should incorporate in the program thank you thank you Hassan yes uh, I also jointly support the proposal this is a very good one and uh, is uh, very important in developing countries as well Virat? strongly support the proposal well written um, very highly ranked um, I think it's a great concept, but Mr. Chairman, we are making lives difficult for ourselves. This is another proposal that moves away from the objectives we set ourselves. I, I, I will support this, but I just want to be mindful that we are making life difficult for ourselves. The team and the stakeholder group is expanding um, more than we had thought we should when we first started this exercise. Michael? I, I just have to address Virat's concerns. Uh, you, you, we really can't focus exclusively on who's organizing the session. We should also look at the fact that these sessions are bringing new, new voices in. In this case, there are government officials as well um, and intergovernmental people on the panel. Um, so I'd, I'd much rather take a panel organized by civil society with a full range of stakeholders on the panel than to take one organized by government or the technical community that was, did not have government people, did not have private sector people. So I, I, um, I understand that there is a desire to retain it on, on the basis of um, uh, import, uh, important and, and unique uh, topic, uh, hate speech uh, and discriminatory speech, and also taking into account that this is already high, highly uh, ranked uh, proposal. So with that in, in mind, that is a uh, wish of the MAG for the moment, and we can move to the next one. Uh, Subi. Subi, please go ahead. 
thank you. Um, I hope I'm audible now. I strongly support the retention of the proposal for those reasons. Uh, it also includes and affords us an opportunity for better stakeholder balance with government. On the youth proposal as well, I do want to say we were trying to log in. I still support it, but um, I would have wanted to see more uh, stakeholder engagement from developing countries, which I did not see. So at the moment, I'm okay with a maybe on that one. If we have scope for improvement in terms of stakeholder participation, I would be very happy. And a quick one, I believe Hartmut mentioned fellowships for youth, and we've been taking this conversation on the mag list for a while now. We would really like to understand the process of how more young people can apply for these fellowships and if they're available for more Asian countries as well. Thank you. So thank you, thank you very much. Um, shall we move then to the next one? And that is 245. Who is, who is proposing? Michael. Uh, this is a flash session. It's about a very important initiative in Mexico. Um, Mexico is scheduled to be the host of the IGF next year, and this would be an interesting preview of one of the topics that will be important at that meeting. Um, just to pick up on what Subi said, uh, I would think it would be really interesting to urge the organizers of this flash se session to bring in some Mexican youth since they're the ones who will benefit most if this strategy is successful. But I thought it was a, a very good use of a flash session. So thank you very much. I, I, think, I think that there is a body language tells me that we're in agreement uh, on top of it that, that uh, contributes to bal balancing of government uh, uh, participation and, and then proposals. So this, this is retained. Uh, we're going now to uh, workshop 79. Uh, zero rating, open internet, and uh, freedom expression. Who is, pro who is uh, speaking on this topic? Yes, I am Lorenzo Pupillo from Telecom Italia. This worksheet is proposed uh, jointly by Telecom Italia and the uh, regulatory agency of Colombia. It's a, it's a, let's say, public-private partnership to some extent. And the Colombian uh, regulator, uh, it's in the government, it's uh, one of the first presenters. And its characteristic is just its approaching zero rating, but also in a more open contest, open internet and freedom of expression. As a very uh, balanced um, um, group of speakers, there is the OECD, uh, the, the academics from uh, the US, Italy from the Latin America, it's a gender balance, and, uh, and, and so it's, it's uh, and then we got a very high rank in both 79. So thank you very much, Mark. Thanks. Um, yes, but uh, a number of us um, uh, who evaluated, highlighted the merger opportunity uh, with 156, and um, which is in the top 60, I think, if I, if I, if I recall rightly, uh, and one or two others. So, I, um, given the pressures we're under, I, I, I don't see the extra sort of balancing factor here. But, uh, but note the uh, consistency of, uh, of merger recommendations in the uh, evaluation exercise. Thank you. So thank, thank you, Marilyn. I support merging. I think it's, uh, we did a main session on net neutrality and related issues last year. Um, if this is retained, I would support merging it. Uh, so thank you, Michael. Um, I, I rank this quite highly because it is a very important topic, particularly in some developed countries. Um, I understand there are other sessions that cover this. Uh, this brought some new issues to the fore. I actually think we could increase the diversity in, in, of the program by suggesting that the organizers use a different format 
maybe a 60-minute discussion section. I mean, really have a, a series, just have people around a circle talking through these issues, because I, I don't think we'll have enough time in the other sessions to really have audience participation and to get into the details that this session wants to get into. So uh, if the organizers would be interested in changing the format and, and helping us explore different ways of doing things, I would strongly support that. So thank, thank you, Virat. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I strongly support this proposal. I also want to bring it to the notice of the House that uh, we've gone, the, the private sector is actually one of the stakeholder groups that has declined below at the current level where we were at top 60. It's also below where we would have been at top 80 and is currently below what the average number of proposals submitted was. So actually, the private sector proposals need to be supported. I say that by uh, identifying my conflict of interest. Uh, this is an excellently written proposal. I would oppose any change in format. Um, I think uh, they have some excellent speakers. Some of these actually were there last year at the, at the, at the IGF and made some very valuable contributions. Um, and uh, last of all, how often do you have a proposal number 79 ranked 79? <laughs> so that, that, wouldn't, that, that trick wouldn't, wouldn't work this time. <laughs> Just but, fine. But what, 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 would, what would work, the argument is that the private sector uh, is underrepresented and on that, that merit uh, we could, we could uh, uh, retain it. Susan, are you in agreement? Um, yes, I am agreement on the, in agreement on that basis. I, I also just wanted to note that I think um, there are probably eight workshop proposals uh, that deal with zero rating. Um, some of them deal with zero rating in the context of developing countries. Others deal with zero rating in the context of um, human rights, which, I mean, they're different uh, ways to approach uh, the same issue. Um, so I think I think that's worth noting, but, um, but I would yes I would uh, vote to retain this. Uh, Flavia, you confirm that. I would just like to know uh, which is the current situation of the other uh, workshop proposals dealing with zero rating: 156, 204, 205, 206. They are very similar proposals. 156, 204, 5, and 6. So can, can we get, can we get uh, information on that? So 156 is included uh, in, in top, in top uh, 60, and others are none. So we have only 156 on the topic, uh, similar topic. In that. So I would, I would suggest that we retain this uh, on the merits of uh, um, a presentation by uh, private sector, uh, which percentage is declining. Could we could we have a floor for uh, Tuella? Uh, Tuella said that um, 
she had a slight concern on diversity with respect to developing country participation and that she would support this uh, if this was addressed. Okay, we will, we will then add this to, um, to the decision, uh, draw attention organizers that maybe invitation of participant from developing country would be uh, useful. And Subi is also in line, so... Please, Subi, go ahead. Thank you, Anas. I completely echo. I got the proposal. I think it's a very well-written proposal, but it definitely needs greater speaker diversity, especially from developing countries, where this is a very, very important issue and is at the crossroads of access and connectivity as well as the key core operating principles. So I would very strongly urge the retention only if the promoters, the proposers agree to at least attempt for greater speaker diversity. Thank you. So thank you very much. It is so decided. Number seven, how the trade agreement shaped the future of internet governance? Who is speaking in favor? Susan. Yes, um, I think that this is an emerging issue. Um, we're seeing increasing crossover between uh, the spheres of, of international trade and uh, internet governance, especially in the realm of policy development and policy development processes. And I think um, that this, is, this will be a great workshop and will garner a lot of interest. So I would support it based on thematic um, diversity. Any other comments? Jack? Um, likewise, also strongly support based on thematic diversity. I think it's a very, very important topic. Um, but it would be good if the, if the organizers of the workshop could also look to invite speakers from other regions, for example, from Asia, where some of the um, bilateral trade agreements are having st really strong impact on internet governance issues. Thank you. Michael? I, I rank this pretty high, but uh, I'm not sure that it merits uh, a full 90 minutes uh, discussion. So I was proposing that perhaps we look at uh, 60 minutes instead. Mirat, please. Um, I would support this proposal with the time that has been given. Uh, trade issues are not something you can discuss in a couple of minutes. Um, it has a really good list of um, speakers. This is an important issue. Um, and lots of internet governance issues, especially in developing countries, are hinging on uh, bilateral trades and investments. And so I think much time must be given to this. Um, countries are still struggling uh, at an average uh, penetration across Africa at 19% and, and Asia at about 30% to get large-scale investments. Uh, all of these things are very linked. Uh, we should certainly retain this proposal, uh, especially on the on the thematic uh, for thematic reasons, and it's also not uh, you know scored that badly. It's uh, scored 85th. So. Uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, Murad, please. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the issue is, uh, is relevant, <coughs> especially with the proliferation of uh, trade agreements uh, outside WTO. What is missing here, I guess, is, the, is to have uh, among the panelists uh, the perspective of WTO representative. Thank you. So I, I um, frame, please. Okay. I just want to support this also because um, taking stock of the current events, like uh, this issue was discussed this week in U.S. Congress, um, and you've seen the reaction by various companies, various nonprofits. It will be something great to discuss during this year's IGF. Thank you. Again, one, once again, uh, please do not uh, uh, speak that much whether that is good or bad proposal. It is good proposal. All 240 are good proposals. Uh, we need to uh, deal with the balancing things. This, I, I see that uh, it would be uh, interesting to retain because of the uniqueness of the topic. And there's not so much on trade and because it is proposed by a private sector. Please, Slobodan. Yeah, this time... Uh, 
uh, in my personal capacity as a MAG member. Uh, I would strongly support this proposal. Uh, it is a unique topic and uh, there is, a, uh, the, at least in my opinion, uh, a, 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 a lack of transparency in a lot of uh, uh, cases when, uh, uh, when these uh, treaties are uh, negotiated. And uh, I think that the, 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 the venue of the IGF itself uh, would be a good uh, place to debate on these issues. So proposal is to retain on the merits of uh, pri private sector proposal and the uniqueness of the topic. Acceptable, Mr. Chairman. It, it, I would defend the proposal, but it's not private sector. We want it is where, it, where it's due. Oh. <laughs> Civil society, they've done a great job. <laughs> oh, sorry, I, I was. <laughs> but I strongly support. Did you, did you, did you change the uh, proponent because it was previously private private sector? No. Sorry, my apologies. So it is retained. Next one, 59. Who is speaking in favor of 59? Then we're going uh, to 124. UNESCO. Thank you, Chair, to give the floor. Uh, my name is uh, Xie Hong Hu, representing UNESCO. And since last day, before I touch upon this proposal, I would like to express my pleasure to be uh, with MAG. And uh, I also like to thank uh, MAG's support, and particularly those MAG members who have uh, attended UNESCO Connected Dots Conference in March, where we have discussed uh, the ongoing UNESCO internet study. And uh, we have then eventually endorsed the outcome document uh, where we repeat our lasting support for the ITF for continuation in current uh, research review plus uh, process. And um, to give you a scale, uh, idea of the of UNESCO's internet study that uh, is 80 page publication we, are, we, we will launch in a UNESCO open forum. And uh, under this, uh, it's, it's very general, comprehensive, and UNESCO centric, uh, which really fits the open forum need. And under this umbrella, we are conducting 15 uh, focused sub-studies in different areas according to the need of the governments and uh, other stakeholders uh, during our past year of consultations. That's why we have uh, put forward three workshops. Uh, please allow me to forecast. Uh, this uh, workshop, one, one, two, four, is the first subject uh, we uh, propose to the IGF. It's about uh, how to balance the transparency and the privacy issue. You know, transparency it means the freedom of information. We see that many of our governments are very concerned about uh, the, uh, on one hand, they need to open data, open governmental information access to the public. On the other hand, this can be in conflict with the pr protection of privacy. So we have commissioned uh, new, a brand new research we're still ongoing. We want to discuss this topic uh, to channel in the new thoughts about it. Uh, of course, also connect to the uh, emerging issue that's the right to be forgotten, so it can be uh, uh, useful to the ITF discussion. And uh, let me also forecast the other proposal we, we are going to look at later on. One is on the... Thank, thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you. We're talking about one, one on the screen now, one, 124. Okay. Uh, MAG members, please, Hossam. Well, uh, <coughs> thank you, Chair. The proposal seems good, but it's more like a presentation of the efforts of UNESCO. It is an intergovernmental, so we need it to be there, but maybe for shorter uh, period of time. Thank you. And UNESCO has an has open, open forum as well. Uh, remote participant? Uh, Sub just uh, said that she would support it, but as a flash session. Uh, any other, any other proposals, thoughts, Virat? 
I would support it, um, Mr. Chairman. A slightly shorter session. Also, want to remind the House that uh, inter uh, intergovernmental organizations had originally submitted 6.7 percent of all the proposals. They're already up to 8 percent. So this is one category that we can now hold off unless something excellent comes through. This proposal, however, is a good one if it's shorter. But I just want to remind ourselves of uh, the fact that we've met the objectives that we set ourselves yesterday morning. So thank you very much. Uh, shall, shall we retain it as a flash session? 30 minutes? Michael? No, I, again, I, I, I really have to question Virat's statistics here. I mean, looking at the number proposed and the number accepted is not the thing we should be looking at. We should be looking at how does the overall pie chart at the end of the day look in terms of the different stakeholders. So I, I, I would use totally different statistics and say that we need to have some of these organizations represented. This is not just a UNESCO proposal. It's a well-balanced uh, panel, different perspectives, uh, good people from different places, um, and I think the transparency issue is one that has not gotten enough attention, so I would f strongly support keeping it at, at 90 minutes. Uh, I've been a strong advocate for flash sessions for presentations that just focused on one project or one agency or one report. This doesn't fall in that category. Uh, Avery? Thank you. Yeah. Um, in favor of the session, I'm not in favor of trying to turn things into flash sessions. Flash sessions have a particular characteristic. They, they, they really need to be designed as that. And so to take something else and say, come up with something that, that's jazzy and can be done as a flash is, diminishes what a flash is. It, it just makes it short session, not flash. So I'm against turning it into a flash. Uh, Marilyn? Marilyn Cade speaking, but I would never want to say that I'm against uh, superheroes like Flash. Uh, trying to compete with Virat. Um, however, I guess my question would be if um, UNESCO might feel that they could do it in 60 minutes uh, and retain the substance, that might be um, a compromise. Uh, Hossam? Um, uh, one thing to take, uh, to take into consideration is that the next uh, uh, proposal is also from UNESCO and is better ranked uh, human rights uh, number 40. So we need, I think, to, to check this as well and take one of them. Thank you. Okay. Um, Mark? Thanks. Uh, support retaining this and also not uh, shortening it. Uh, it doesn't lend itself to a flash session because what I... Uh, pulled from this was um, advancing best practice and, and making uh, policy uh, recommendations. It's a very valuable um, um, session in that regard and requires 90 minutes. So uh, I would be strongly averse to uh, shortening it. Thank you. So thank you very much. Se seems that, uh, again, we're, we're back, back in the discussion where the uh, theme is, is, is worth uh, human rights uh, and uh, freedom of expression online is oversubscribed. In, in, so it's, uh, it's really uh, many, many proposals. Uh, if we would retain it, it would be only on merit of uh, that this comes from intergovernmental organization. And uh, in, that, in that respect, uh, I maybe uh, would like to follow, follow uh, Hassan's, uh, Hassan's advice uh, to look at uh, uh, Proposal 40 and then decide uh, if the Proposal 40 comes from UNESCO as well to see what is, what is the difference and uh, uh, what, whether we retain both, whether we retain one, whether we retain uh, one or another in, in changed uh, format. So can we go to but 40? It's not from UNESCO, please. Number 40. No, okay. it's not from UNESCO. We are, uh, it's, it's 124, 120, and 128. I see, yes, I see it's not from UNESCO. So then, then uh, I, would, I would advise, uh, again, fol following discussions and some, some uh, concerns, that maybe we retain 124 and do it in, propose to do it in 60 minutes. Michael. 
the reason we need 90 minutes for this is because you have a number of different national initiatives that try to address this balance between transparency and privacy. If you decrease it to, to 60 minutes, then it will be just focused on a, a few global perspectives and we'll miss the opportunity to actually examine the case studies. I mean, the, the third part of the proposal was the part that was most exciting to me, and that's the part that demands 90 minutes. So thank you, Subi. After looking at the proposal and revisiting it, suggest a shorter session. Given the fact that UNESCO does have an open forum, I agree with uh, what is already on the floor that this raises important concerns, but I would uh, still suggest that we take the most exciting part of the, the session discussion, the case studies, prioritize it, and look at best practices and information sharing. We do believe that workshops which are looking at the opportunity of presenting or sharing reports or studies um, can make an attempt to work as a flash session. I support retention, but I still believe that a 60-minute session would make sense for the proposal. Thank you. So, thank you. Mark? Yes, uh, I'm sorry to come back on, in on this, but um, my uh, approach to this is, is framed by our objective in, in terms of the IGF being outcome orientated and, and uh, developing uh, consensus on best practice and so on. And you can't do that in 60 minutes. I, I'm agreeing with uh, Mike Nelson here. We really need this 90 minutes to allow the, the flow of the session to reach that vital point. And uh, it serves the interests of the IGF to have that uh, 30 minutes to, okay, let's look at uh, where the, uh, the consensus is on practice and, uh, and uh, formulate some recommendations. Thank you. Hossam? Yes, uh, back to uh, Proposal 40, it is co-organized by the UNESCO and has speakers from UNESCO as well. So thank, thank you. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm really, um, Fiona. Yes, thank you very much, Janice. Um, I've been listening to, to everyone very carefully and, and reading the proposal again, and I do have a couple of questions about how a debate format actually leads to a conversation on best practices, and maybe understanding that would help resolve the issue of whether or not you needed 90 minutes. Uh, Virat? Mr. Chairman, I think UNESCO is here. We should check with them if they are in a position to do this in 90 minutes. They'll be in a good position to advise us. We shouldn't ignore that altogether. Um, if, you know, there are equal views on both sides. But I want to seek a clarification for you. Mike Nelson has now said three times uh, to the statistics that I have read out, which the Secretariat has worked very hard on that those should not be taken into consideration. Are we working towards an objectives based on statistics that the Secretariat presents to us every morning, or are we to ignore those? Because if we don't have an objective criteria of rating, now we don't have an objective criteria of how the stakeholder groups are looking, then the entire exercise that the Secretariat does should be dispensed with. If not, then we have to have a aim to which we have to move. So I'd like a clarification whether the work that the Secretariat does is relevant for the MAG, to take cue from and to move towards, or should we ignore that and look at subjective judgments of who is in which speaker slot? I'm not seeking clarification from Mike Nelson, but from the chair. Thank you. Yes, everything Secretariat does uh, uh, is, is correct, and uh, we, we, we follow the statistics provided by Secretariat, which are based on facts and numbers uh, they retain uh, from so there's no, no any more conversation about that. I, w I, don't, I was mischaracterized. Uh, my, my apologies. I do not want to. I do not want to prolong this conversation. If you, if you gentlemen would, would uh, do it offline, both both of you right now. We should have tea. Please. I agree. I, st I, still, uh, I still feel that uh, since presentation of the report that UNESCO does on, on, on this uh, c could be done in, the, um, uh, in open forum, 
the session could be oriented towards uh, discussion on dif different regional perspectives, as, as Michael said, and I would retain my proposal to uh, retain the session 60 minutes. Michael? We've accepted lots of other proposals for 90 minutes that would be more limited than just the part of this proposal which you just mentioned as being the priority. So I, I again, I think uh, I, I, the next proposal, number 40, is a great candidate for flash session. This one, to have a full discussion, as Mark Carvel has said, to look at all these different countries and compare and contrast and debate, deserves 90 minutes. Fiona? Yes, thank, thank you very much, Janice. I mean, my initial reaction to this proposal is that I don't understand why it's not part of the UNESCO public forum or open forum anyway. I'm still unclear how there's going to be a debate of all these things given the speakers that are actually been listed. Um, and again, I'm happy to go along with your suggestion of 60 minutes if we can move forward and move on to the next one. So I, I hear that there is a prevailing opinion about uh, shortening session of 60 minutes, re retaining on the merits of uh, proposal by international organization, uh, and uh, that is that is chair's ruling. Uh, next is uh, 40. speaking for uh, workshop 40. Michael? I would support this as a flash session. I ranked it quite highly, but it, in no way would I think it be a 90-minute session. Any support for proposed proposal, flash session, 30 minutes? Marilyn? I, find, I found the topic um, valuable, but I noted as well that um, there's a different view of balance, and that is not just from stakeholder groups or IGOs, but also from a single entity, the number of workshops we're able to accept. Um, I see this also as fitting into a category that I observed on yesterday, and that is when research is being presented or when academics are presenting uh, papers, I see those as flash sessions or poster sessions, not as um, full sessions. And I, this to me is the launch of a publication. So proposal is to retain, retain uh, as a flash session for 30 minutes. remote participants. Uh, Tuella commented that uh, she rated the, this one highly for bringing in the perspectives of governments through IGOs. And we have a uh, Subi waiting in line. Uh, Subi, please go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I, I think it's a great proposal and it raises important questions, but I would, since we already have the UNESCO representative present in the room, also try and get a sense of how this is going to be different from the open forum. And uh, I agree with Marilyn's comment uh, in terms of striving for balance when we're accepting the number of proposals from a single entity or driven by a single entity. So if that could be addressed, then maybe we could consider this as a flash session. But I also see this as an opportunity to launch research or share presentation, and that I don't know if it lends very well to a workshop format. Thank you. So thank you, Jack. I didn't see workshop 40 as a workshop that is actually sharing research. I saw it as trying to facilitate a process where various intergovernmental organizations are coming together to have a dialogue about their role and how, you know, what is their, resp you know, their role in terms of um, engaging with the issue of internet governance and internet policy. So I'm not sure um, where, that's, where that um, understanding is coming, mean, unless I'm reading it wrongly. Um, and I think UNESCO was saying that this is not 
proposed by UNESCO, in which case I think that needs to be more clarification because um, the name of the proposal of the organizing group clearly states that it's UNESCO. So I think there's a, like some conflation and confusion happening. Saying that, I think it is an important topic um, and one that hasn't really appeared in many other um, workshop proposals that has been accepted, I believe. I think there was another proposal that, um, that aimed to look at the Human Rights Council and the links to the IGF. So in that sense, I think it is quite critical and, and worthy of examination, and if so, then a round table would actually work. But I think there's a lot of questions in terms of actually what this workshop is trying to do and who's, who's organizing it. So based on, based on that uh, proposal, like actually, and uh, going back to the reason why we're doing this exercise, uh, if this is a, a qualified as a, a civil society proposal on the theme which is uh, oversubscribed, so then we may uh, decide not to retain it in this category and see whether it will make in uh, on its own merit uh, based on um, uh, based on. Uh, 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 rankings. Would that be acceptable? We do not retain it here and uh, see whether uh, it gets in uh, based on its, its own merit uh, according to rankings. I see no objections. That's decided. Uh, 169. One sixty nine. Who is speaking on this? Flavia. Uh, Flavia, please. So this, uh, there are many uh, initiatives for building uh, internet observatories around the world uh, for uh, many different reasons. Some of them are wide scope, others are focused on some specific issues. They come from different uh, stakeholder groups, from governments, from technical community, from civil society. And the, the effort in this uh, proposal is to bring together all those initiatives. Uh, you can see a very diverse list of uh, participants that can discuss, discuss all those uh, different initiatives in, in a common framework. So I think it's uh, also unique. There is, uh, we have approved a proposal from Portugal, but it's a very specific issue, which is accessibility. And while, while this is a, a very a wider scope, the, the proposal of the workshop, and I think it's the, the only one uh, dealing with this issue in, uh, among all the proposals we have. So any, any further comments, Michael? I strongly support this. This was one of my top ten because it brings a lot of facts to the table from a lot of different places. And um, just second what was just said. And uh, I, I do think this is a unique topic, which is the primary reason to support it. We don't have other things like it. Uh, Hossam? Thank you, Fischer. I'm not, uh, I'm not the expert in this, but I would think that one hour would be enough for uh, those three stakeholders uh, working. Mark? Yes, I agree with that. That was one of my comments. Shorter 60-minute session for this. Thank you. Uh, Subi? Uh, first, uh, uh, Ginger said that uh, uh, she supports the topic and it needs full time. And uh, of course, uh, Subi is now in the queue. Please, Subi, take the floor. Yes, Subi, we can hear you. Can you? Thank you. So I said I looked at the proposal in detail. I think it's a fantastic new initiative. But I don't support the proposal as yet because I do not see enough diversity and I also do not see enough diversity in perspectives. Um, I could not spot anybody from the government as well in terms of intersections and crossroads. But if we do decide to retain the proposal, I believe a shorter session would make sense for it. Thank you. Um. 
thank, thank you. Uh, we know that some, some, at least what we agreed yesterday, uh, like uh, GIPO initiative will be presented in open forum by European Commission. Um, Michael, please. I, I'm confused because someone just mentioned that there were just three initiatives to discuss, but in looking at the proposed speakers, I count at least ten different very important initiatives, several of which are not discussed in other sessions. Uh, if each of these people get seven minutes, that we have more than an hour, and if we're actually sharing data and debating that data, we can't do anything in just 60 minutes. So again, if you look at the list of, of, of proposed speakers, uh, it's a very full debate. And uh, I, I know the, the diversity question is a good one. Uh, the, the, the challenge, I think, though, is that most of the observatories that have been funded have come from the developed countries where there's enough money to fund them. So thank you. So uh, cl clearly the, uh, there is a, a desire to retain this because of the uniqueness of the, of the topic. The only uh, unclarity for the moment is some suggested that we need to shorten uh, 60 minutes or we retain uh, uh, full. Dominique. Just if we retain it to 90, which I'm in support of, I would suggest also including the CSTD mapping in this process as well, based on discussions with Peter Major. So I think if we do that, it might be actually a really full and, and quite rich uh, workshop. Thanks. Uh, Ginger. Oh, thank you, Chair. This is Ginger uh, Park. I would um, strongly suggest retaining this workshop because of the opportunity to unhear about these different resources and with the full time, um, because as Mike said, there are so many different perspectives we need to hear. And I support also then uh, an attempt uh, uh, request to include uh, Dominique's suggestion there that we make sure that all of the different uh, major observatories or, or watches are included. Thank you. So thank you. I, I then uh, would propose to retain this proposal on the merits of uniqueness of, uh, of topic and uh, go to the next one, 220. Or Marilyn, you wanted to say something. I just wanted to say something very quickly. Um, I, I do support uh, inviting the CSTD Secretariat to uh, join to present the uh, mapping, and it would be the Secretariat that the invitation should go to. Um, but I just want to note that, as I understand this session, it is an informational session. It is not actually a debate. It's informational. So my guidance, uh, my further feedback would be, I hope that the uh, organizers will take seriously the opportunity to present a digest in writing uh, to support their work um, since many people may not be able to attend, uh, but it would be an important documentation. Thank you. So thank you. With that in mind, uh, I saw that uh, Benedicto noted your suggestion. Now we're going to 220. Uh, considering the topic about energy uh, transition, I think it's uh, is a very critical issue. But I saw that in the in the proposals, there's uh, also similar uh, proposal to discuss the energy transition issues. So I suggest suggest to maybe we need to to work. Thank you, uh, Mark. Thanks, yes, very much uh, on the same uh, line. S number 72 is in the top 60, so uh, this could merge with 72. But there is no additional balancing factor here. Thank you. Marilyn? <coughs> yes. So that is so decided. We do not retain it. Uh, all, and we suggest to organizers to go and, and see with uh, other proponents of similar topics. Two, two, six. 
who is speaking on this topic? Jack? Um, sorry, I was just looking for it and a little bit slow. Um, um, okay. I thought that this was a very interesting topic on an important area um, that didn't really that I didn't I don't think I saw very much in in the previous um, already accepted workshop um, unless if I'm wrong please correct me um, but I thought it was interesting because it was being proposed by um, the stakeholder group which is government which was an area that we wanted to balance also from a developing country um, point of view and given that the thematic area is also critical I wanted to support this proposal. So thank you very much. Merit is that it comes from government from developing country. And Michael, and then remote participant. I don't usually speak against proposals, particularly ones about open data, which I'm a big fan of. But I, I, I just question whether this is remotely linked to internet governance. I mean, it, this is primarily data governance. It's about how governments manage their data. Um, Great, you know, great people for another meeting. Remote participant. Uh, to Ella supports uh, 226 for relevance and for government engagement. So thank you, Dominique. Hi, um, Mike, to your point, I've actually spoken on an open data panel at the IGF a couple years ago. Um, I think that this is open government and open data and OGP and all of the sort of issues that are being identified here um, are, are really quite important for the, for the IGF. But I just spoke to Mark who said that there are actually two other panels that this could possibly be merged with, so maybe we should look at that. But I, I do think we should have at least something on open data because it's very multi-stakeholder, the approaches that governments have to it. Thank you. So thank you, Mark. Yes, um, strongly support this. Uh, it's a, it's a, because of the governmental factor in, in our balancing exercise here. The, uh, the other proposals on the similar track uh, were low scoring, I think, 227 and uh, 230 I, I identified. I'm not sure where 230 is exactly, to be honest. So, but uh, I, um, I support this, uh, as I say, it's government, as points already been made, you have government participation and so on. Thank you. As so a factor. Thank you. Can, can we retain it on the merits uh, of um, that uh, that comes from government and uh, we aim at balancing more and, and bring more government participation in, in the Virat? Actually, the, uh, the openness sub team is one of the uh, slimmest to subscribe to, so for two good reasons, openness and government, they should certainly go through. Thank you. Zendong, you are in agreement, right? Yes, support. Thank you. <laughs> So 110, please. Uh, Yanis, could we please? Uh, so, sorry, so, Subi, you are in agreement on the previous one, right? Yanis, yeah, um, thank you, and I, I, I'm grateful if we recorded an opportunity to also present our views and when we do the first round of inputs. I do want to say that this is an extremely important proposal and we should retain it, but I do have a comment on the one on observatory. Um, I, it, it gives me a sense of discomfort if we're being talked at from a developing country perspective. And I do want to request the host, and some of them are present, the workshop proposals, to also take in a developing country perspective from the observatory, and then we retain it. On this one, I strongly support retention, and I also support the existing time format. Um, thank you. So thank you, Subi. We're moving now to the next one, uh, 110. I think I have a conflict of interest on this uh, proposal because I'm, I'm listed in the panelists. 
but considering uh, I, I just want to share some information about this topic, you know, that Internet Plus is a, now is the national strategy of China. So as the largest Internet user country, so so now the whole country is crazy for this uh, strategy, which was published in, in early of this year by the, the Premier Li Keqiang. So, so now the, so there has, there's a lot of discussion about the Internet Plus. So I, I think it's, it's, uh, it's better for, for them to bring information from the largest in the population and to give the ideas, to share the information for this forum. I think it's, uh, it's okay to, to, to get it. So thank you very much for presentation and informing us about uh, potential conflict of interest. Uh, Hassan? Um, thank you, Chair. I think it is uh, a very interesting topic, uh, a good subject, and very uh, important for developing countries as well. So I uh, propose retaining it. Thank you. Michael? I have a conflict of interest because I've given many talks about Cloud Plus. Um, but I, just to be serious, uh, this is one of the few really well thought out proposals that has a large number of people from China, which is an incredibly important player. So I'd strongly support it. Uh, Mark? Yes, yeah, strongly support. There'll be a lot of interest in this, I'm sure. Um, particularly, uh, this is coming from China, huge internet population, a lot, lot of exciting stuff going on and so on. Yeah, that, that is the sort of additional factor here, I think, certainly. Thank you. Uh, remote participant? Uh, Subi supports this. I hear no, no objections and we uh, agree to retain it. On the, on the merits of uh, proposal, uh, geograf geographical uh, balance and uh, proposal by technical community. Birat? Mr. Chairman, is it time to sort of get a hold of how many have we retained now? Because I think we're getting close to 90. or it, well, we must be past 86, 87. So we should just get a hold of how many more can come through. I think we only have space for f 10 or 12 more. We should we just stop for a moment and get, an, get the retained number beyond 70? <laughs> So we, s we still have uh, about um, 14 proposals to uh, look at. Um, I think, indeed, we are uh, close to 100. We are at 86 right now. So are we? 86 approved. Are we? You're, you're keeping very good statistics, I see. I'm not sure. I think we're, we're beyond uh, 86. Okay, what we, what, what we can do, I do not really want, want to lose uh, much time on, on, on this. Uh, uh, how, how many minutes you would need to uh, give us a, a current, current score? You can keep going, I just wanted to get the number. Yeah, 11 retained, 4 not retained, and 1 maybe. So we're about somewhere in, in uh, low 90s for the moment. So we can just get in about eight or 10 more. Uh, we, do not, we do not need necessarily get eight, eight more because we, we still have on maybe list uh, things that we discussed. We need to continue examining uh, the uh, proposals uh, and go through the list as, uh, uh, and then do this balancing exercise as we agreed at the beginning. So next, next is 165. Jan, is just to note that uh, Regent Han supports the previous one. Thank you. 165, measure, uh, implementing and measuring internet access as a human right, civil society. Zandong, are you st speaking on this? Or you're just, you, you haven't uh, put down your flag. And this is straight in front of me. Thank you. Who is speaking on this proposal? Jack, are you speaking?
thank you. Sorry, I just had to refresh my, my memory in terms of um, which proposals I put forward. Um, I did put forward this proposal because I thought that linking between uh, it was more, more thematic rather than stakeholders, so maybe it's not so appropriate to bring it up here. But I thought that it was important because it was linking a critical issue around access with human rights as well as indicators. Um, but on closer reading, I may have been mistaken in my interpretation, so I will open it up for discussion. So thank, thank you. As I said, we, we need not to... to uh, invent things. We need to follow criteria. I see this is from civil society, well-represented uh, stakeholder group on the uh, topic which is uh, uh, oversubscribed. And uh, I will listen. Uh, Michael. When you say the topic is oversubscribed, do you mean human rights is oversubscribed or censorship is oversubscribed? Because as I recall, there's only one other panel on censorship and freedom of expression. Is, am I mistaken? I, I understand that this is a question to MAG members, not to the chair. Murat, please. It was actually to the, to, to the secretariat. I, I, I didn't think we had other... We don't have an overabundance of panels on this topic, narrow topic, not broad topic of human rights. Not. Yeah, thank you. Uh, just wanted to, we have to check if the, the topic hasn't been retained elsewhere because uh, I guess I have seen some something related to internet measurement access. Thank you. Honestly, uh, what I heard so far is not very convincing. Uh, on, on the exercise we're engaged in. I would propose not to retain it uh, on those merits uh, and uh, see whether it will get in on its own. Michael? No? No objections? Decided. 108. Again, this is for me. I thought that it was uh, it <coughs> supported two things, three things actually. In terms of format, it was quite interesting. I mean, it's uh, not a very, it's quite a light format. It was it's a flash session, and um, it's also being proposed by a government stakeholder and was on a relatively little represented in thematic area, which I thought was interesting. So thank you very much. Merit is presented by the government. Flash session, 30 minutes. I see body language suggesting that we retain this. Subi. Thank you, Chair, for accepting the retention. I do want to say this is a very, very important topic and is an increasing concern. It relates to both governance as well as preservation of heritage using digital media. Strong support for retention. Thank you. So thank you very much. It is decided. Who is speaking in favor of this? Michael? Again, this was uh, one of the few that focused very, very tightly on transparency and the need to uh, make make more information available on what's really going on on the internet. Um, I, I, I may be biased. I give a very strong proposal uh, scoring to this because I do know some of the people involved and they've done outst outstanding work in the U.S. Uh, on these issues. So I, the argument is that it brings a new topic to the table.
any other reaction? Transparency, not necessarily a new topic. Lynn? And I also rated it very high, both for the topic, plus also um, on the quality of the speakers and the fact that they were new speakers. So many of the panels actually cycle through just the same, um, same past participants. So I don't, I don't hear any, any argument uh, why we should retain apart from that there are new speakers. Can, can't, we, can't we advise those who uh, do similar, uh, similar uh, workshops which are retained already to use those speakers in, in, in their workshops? Michael? Again, they're taking a different take on the issue. That's that, that's the argument I'm making. But you know, Subi. So two things. Uh, one, it's an important topic, but I, it is certainly not a new topic. I support the chair's idea of borrowing the fantastic speakers. Um, by some of the workshops that have already been selected, and there are some on this issue of digital trust. I like the approach, but I also think a greater effort could have been made on improving on speaker diversity, because this is an issue that cuts across borders. I don't see that outreach. I thought it was a well-written proposal, but I did not see enough of an effort to call this other contentions or threats, and therefore um, I think it's a great idea if we can share the resource persons and those could be accommodated in other similar sessions. Thank you. So th thank you. Uh, Mark? Thanks. Yes, I, following uh, Supi's comment there, I, I think the reason it lacks diversity is that this was really focusing on um, the findings of uh, the Open Technology Institute and uh, th the uh, activities of the working group of the Freedom Online Coalition um, on privacy and transparency. So I reacted this as as a as an informational session that could well in uh, read across to other sessions. So I'm not sure we can identify easily any uh, balancing additionality here, but certainly the information it would deliver would be very valuable. Uh, I, they've got 60 minutes. Is that right? 60 minutes. Um, Maybe there's some other way of ensuring that these uh, um, reports and information could feed in uh, rather than uh, a 60-minute roundtable. Maybe that's too much. Thank you. So can we put it on maybe list? Uh, Michael? Uh, again, this is not something that other people are talking about. This is about transparency of what companies are doing. It's about, I mean, my own company publishes a transparency report. That's a very useful way of building trust with our customers. Government policy impacts what kind of transparency we can provide, but this isn't really about policy in government. It's about what businesses do, and there's no other session that talks about this kind of corporate transparency. Uh, the argument that was just made, which is this is about a particular report, is one that I make a lot when I argue for flash sessions. This is about four different reports looking at transparency data. So we can keep 60 minutes, or I would propose four flash sessions. But turning this into a flash session, I think, would really be unfair to four really important projects that are not similar to anything else discussed on the agenda. And I think they would also probably bring some private sector people into the discussion. I know I'd, I'd want to be part of this discussion. So uh, thank, thank you. Uh, Hassan? Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, um, it, it seems to be a good workshop uh, proposal, but it doesn't add to the balance or the diversity. And um, I think it could be uh, put on maybe, as you mentioned. Thank you. So then I propose to put it on maybe and, and then see how far we can get, uh, whether we, we can get any of maybe list also in the program. Uh, Subi? Thank you. 
I would still propose uh, either a poster or um, space on a booth so that reports could be shared. And my only challenge here is the limitation or the narrowness of the approach, which could be focused and distilled, but I don't see this as a workshop session. So we can pocket it maybe or an alternative of a space at the boot or a poster session which can share key findings of let's say four reports, if not one on transparency. Thank you. So thank you. We'll retain it on maybe list. Uh, one two oh one. So, uh, although we have already uh, proved yesterday uh, another workshop on IXPs, this number 171, uh, this uh, proposal brings a completely different perspective. Uh, it is on the sustainability of IXPs in the developing world. And if you see the list of uh, proposed speakers, you will see a very diverse list of people from private sector, from governments, uh, experts in economic issues, uh, people from civil, different civil society organizations. So not only people running the IXPs, but also people bringing the, the perspective, the economic perspective of uh, IXPs. If we compare this to the uh, proposal 171, there, this other proposal was uh, uh, submitted by the technical community and all proposed speakers are from the technical community running IXPs. So the, the other proposal will have a much more technical perspective. And this one is much more on the economic issues uh, and how can we have uh, IXPs in the developing world. So bringing all the stakeholders together. So thank, thank you, Marilyn. Thank you, Chair. Marilyn Cade speaking. I, um, I'm aware we approved um, one other workshop yesterday. I'm also aware that we have a best practice forum. And um, I see this is proposed by um, a Brazilian colleague um, from the private sector. Um, it is, however, I believe, and I just want to clarify this, I believe it is heavily focused on uh, the Latin American um, uh, experience, which is very robust, by the way. I just want to acknowledge that. But I'm, uh, I'd like to see if there's a way to perhaps shorten it to 60 minutes. Uh, I appreciate the, uh, Flavia believes it shouldn't be merged, but I'm feeling the need to leave a little space for some of the workshops we're not going to get to say one final thing. I hope all of the workshops which are related to best practice forums are going to be encouraged by the chair to interact with the best practice forum. Uh, for sure. Please uh, consider them. Uh, uh, Juan Alfonso. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I voted uh, rank it very highly this uh, workshop, and as Flavio said, this is a, a good complementary to the other workshop. I think that we have, uh, as a MAG, uh, the the task of, of proposing a, a good and robust uh, program for the IGF. It, this could be excellent to put this first and the other back-to-back uh, uh, -back one uh, in you know, one workshop and the other at the continuation, because it's really very well, uh, as I said yesterday, this is about the apple and the other one is about the apple pie. So I think that uh, I, really, I highly endorse this uh, workshop. This is very much interesting, not only for governments of Latin America, but for every country in, in the world, not only governments, uh, everybody. This is key for internet. Thank you, Sita. Yeah, I'm not sure whether debate is a, a correct uh, workshop format, whether this could be also roundtable or panel. Uh, the second 
suggestion I would like to make is to also add another region as well. I know this is re very heavily in Latin America, but it would be good to also add another region to learn. Thank you. So thank you, Mark. Thanks. That was one of my points, that um, uh, the value of uh, including Africa and uh, Asian experience uh, to this. Um, I read 171 um, as uh, which the title is uh, IXPs Driving Connectivity and Local Economies. So I r maybe we ought to bring it up again, but I didn't read that as totally um, technical. So I don't really see the precise argument about complementarity here. My approach really was to merge this with the, with 171. Um, as, as the solution. I don't really see the additionality, um, but perhaps bringing up 171 might help. Thank you. On the screen, I mean. Yeah, if you could put on the screen 171 and in, in, in the meantime, remote participant and, and Slobodan. Okay, so the uh, first is a comment from Tuella. Uh, her concern is that uh, the, that, uh, the proposer um, uh, flag this as a debate, but she doesn't think that it, it is a proper uh, classification. And uh, uh, on my behalf, I, uh, I strongly support this, uh, this uh, uh, proposal on the basis of the uniqueness of the views that this, uh, that this, okay, muted. <laughs> I muted a newly new the, a new participant, remote person. So, <laughs> so um, I think that uh, this brings us a unique perspective. Uh, we are usually uh, when we talk about the IXPs and this uh, internet uh, government settings, we usually speak about the technical stuff. But uh, I think this is a this is a unique thing, and uh, I think that we should support it. So we, we have now 171 on the, s on the screen. We see participants. Zendong. I uh, support this uh, proposal. There is also a uh, number uh, 201. It's also discussed the, the ISP issues. So if there is nothing sorry, to, to note that, and to, I think it's, uh, of course that ISP, ISP is, is very important for the internet connection in the, in, in the infrastructure there. So. Uh, but I, I stress maybe put a topic for IXP, but, but to consider to note that. So thank you. Uh, I, I, I hear there is no convincing argument, and uh, there is um, um, little on this balancing uh, uh, act that we're trying to do. Uh, if I may suggest to put it on maybe list for the moment. Uh, also, you are in agreement with me. Uh, no, just, just a question. What what time was allotted for 171? I think 90 minutes. 90 minutes. So maybe a merger for a full 90 minutes uh, could could go on. But but I if if we have to keep one of those. The other, because this is more in implementation, 171 in implementation, and the other is more in the concept of sustainability. It's more, it's more interesting, more basic for, for policy makers. That, that, that's the idea of the IGF, you know, to aid policy makers. So if we have to retain one of two, I'd rather have the one that is higher level and the other. But uh, I think the complementary is clear there. So maybe, in, I don't know, maybe a, a 120 minute <laughs> session uh, of, of, of merger for 120 minutes or two sessions of 60 minutes could be back to back, could be a, a, a solution, you know, uh, something like that. Uh, Jack? 
I would actually support the proposal of two 60-minute sessions. I think this, this proposal actually brings in quite a critical perspective to the conversation that isn't covered by 171. Uh, I would uh, uh, hate to do this, this type of uh, uh, sort of conditionalities uh, because this is not in, not in our practice. Uh, we're n not talking about merit of the proposal. Uh, proposal is uh, very good. We're talking about why we will, we're bringing proposal from rank 123 up to uh, uh, top 100. And we need to justify why we're doing this. We have set criteria for ourselves why we're doing this. To improve uh, balance being uh, of stakeholder groups, being of uh, uh, topics, being uh, geographic representation, please give an argument why we're doing this. Because every 240 uh, workshops, they have merit to be uh, organized and, and uh, uh, present in, in, the, in the meeting. Government speakers is a reason. Government uh, we're, we're, speakers. We're hoping that every every uh, uh, workshop or every session will have uh, speakers representing all stakeholder groups. We're hoping. This is a one, of, one of the conditions of that. So I, I would, for the moment, I would suggest to retain it on, on maybe list. I'm coming back to my... Uh, my, my proposal, Izumi. I'm okay with this approach, so I have um, nothing to add. So thank you. Let's put it on the maybe list, and then then we will we will see what is our uh, room of maneuver. Yes, please, Benedicta. Yeah, just a, a comment. Yes, I think that's okay for the moment to be on the maybe list, but. Building on what was said by Juan, I think from the perspective of government, uh, it, it is important. Uh, we, we fully uh, concur with the notion that government should be in both, speak on both, but from the approach that is proposed by 201 is different, as explained by Flavio, since it will not deal only with the technical aspect, but with the uh, aspects that are important from the perspective of policy making, and this will appeal very much to governments. So I think by putting it on a maybe list, uh, we would like to add this comment because we think that, that should be seen in that light. And I think the proposal made by Juan maybe to address the issue and not to lose sight, not, not to get away, not get rid of the this decision we made before in regard to the previous, but to try to find a way not to lose the substance we are looking for into 2001, 201. Thank you. So thank you. Uh, 120. So who is speaking on this topic? UNESCO. Uh, first, to explain, this session is kind of a pain to pay tribute to the ITF Plus 10 because all this uh, flagship in intermediate internet freedom series were built up on the meeting and discussions at ITF in past 10 years. Now we are reaching our 10th edition of this, uh, this series publication, which were well received by our governments and other stakeholders. So we'd like to showcase all this uh, existing five editions and also five, and five forthcoming ones. It fits the so the fifth is to, it's really outcome of the ITF. It's a baby of ITF. And uh, secondly, I just clarify uh, the difference between the open forum and our workshops. Uh, to respond to some mag member request uh, that uh, uh, Open Forum UNESCO is re really a very institutional uh, activity to show, to explain the a process, the current uh, uh, the current uh, internet study, focus on study, and to 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 inform how uh, stakeholders can engage with us as a huge organization with 2,000 people start working. And we have with a very full range of uh, mandate areas or cross cutting access, human rights and uh, uh, ethics, many other areas. But workshops is really we we particularly choose a very a very burning top. Uh, topics and focus areas to fit into the idea of this discussion. So thank you. Uh, Mark? 
Thanks. Um, well, it's it's launching publication, so it doesn't suit uh, the 90-minute uh, workshops, and I don't see a balancing factor here. Um, I would suggest to UNESCO they find some way to um, provide visibility for this, these publications, um, to complement uh, the open forum. I don't know if they've got a stand in the village, but some event uh, sort of around uh, the village site, if they have a site, would be the solution for this. So I, I, I put this definitely as uh, not uh, uh, you know, fitting our objective here. Thank you. So thank you, Michael. Uh, once again, uh, I'm reading from Mark's talking points. Uh, there were several comments in the evaluations that said a flash session would be a more appropriate since it is focused on one institution and since UNESCO does have other opportunities. I, I don't think it f makes sense to push this into another related session, but a good flash session would make sense. So thank you, Virat. Uh, for all those reasons, Mr. Chairman, uh, and the fact that intergovernmental organizations are now oversubscribed, as well as not oversubscribed, but higher than where we targeted, and Internet and Human Rights is certainly oversubscribed. So you are suggesting not to retain it? Not to retain it. Uh, Marilyn? Oh, thank you. Um, I, I support retaining it as a flash session. It is an important contribution of uh, a publication, which in fact many of the governments find quite valuable. I, I was one of the people who proposed uh, in my comments that it be, since it's the launch of a public, since it's the launch of a publication, that it be a flash session. But I think it's important to retain it in in that uh, in that manner. Fiona. Yes, thank you, Yanis. I think I would agree with Farad. I don't understand why this is not part of the UNESCO public forum. If they're launching a new publication, why it's not part of that exercise. So thank you. It se seems that we do not have a, a, a common view on this. Uh, cer certainly a view that we have is uh, does not merit uh, uh, be retained. Uh, as a 90-minute session, and uh, I would uh, suggest to put it on maybe uh, for the moment, uh, taking into account that uh, UNESCO have uh, or will, will have uh, open forum uh, where a launch of publication could be done. And this is presented as a launch of publication, as as, as we read on the uh, on the proposal. Uh, Michael? Uh, sorry, j just to respond to Fiona, uh, this is constructed completely different than UNESCO Open Forum. The speakers are not UNESCO talking about UNESCO. This is a very impressive group of confirmed speakers that are talking about the topic. So it's a reaction to the report, which is very different than what happens in an Open Forum. No, actually, these are authors, authors of the uh, chapters of, uh, of the report, most probably, having experience uh, of some, some time in UNESCO. I imagine that these are uh, authors who uh, uh, contributed to the substance of the report. Yeah, all yeah. the all authors were commissioned from uh, academia, civil society. None of them are UNESCO staff, I assure you. Yes, Zhang Kong uh, confirmed that I what I was saying. So I would, I would not like to prolong any more. Uh, su I suggest to uh, put it on maybe list and uh, uh, see if uh, we can, we can uh, offer something uh, as a result of uh, uh, our discussion further. Uh, let me go to 109. Jack? Um, I proposed this because I thought it was, um, it's, it's actually quite an important um, area around, it's uh, an important internet governance um, discussion as well as representing uh, 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 Southeast Asian region um, and that was quite focused in terms of bringing in the perspective of um, this sub-region into the, into the conversation which is not 
as well represented. Um, however, I would recommend that, and the, the stakeholder groups um, are also people who are involved in organizing the Asia Pacific Regional IGF, so they will also be able to make, break, make that link into the global IGF. But I would also recommend that a government stakeholder be identified as a speaker for the session. So thank you very much, Marilyn. Thank you, Chair. I'm Marilyn Kate speaking. I, um, I have some question about how to incorporate this. Uh, for example, there will be an interregional uh, dialogue, an interregional slash national IGF dialogue. And yesterday we talked about another workshop, I think it's, two, I think it's 228, which was a, uh, also related to the experiences of national and regional IGFs. And um, we haven't made a decision about keeping that one. Um, we could merge this one and that one. Uh, the other suggestion I made yesterday was that the um, uh, work be brought into the interregional dialogue of the national and regional IGFs. So I think it's got valuable content to it, and I certainly respect the fact that the experience of all of the national and regional IGFs is important. But I'd like to consider either merging it with the um, with the other one, or uh, perhaps shortening it and urging that they also participate in the interregional dialogue of the national and regional IGF. Thank you, Virat. Sure, and I've been uh, <coughs> involved with the Asia Pacific IGF, and and yet uh, I can't support this proposal. Um, it's. It doesn't meet any of the balancing uh, objectives that we're trying to reach in terms of uh, either the stakeholder group or the sub-theme, which is the second highest subscribed. Um, it is a regional perspective, and I think several similar uh, discussions, not exactly the same, but are, are being discussed um, around this place. So it sort of at best goes to the maybe list, and if you can find space in, in later on to try and bring it up with something else, it's probably possible. I just want to be, I think it's a, it's an important discussion, but we have to give a really good reason to move it to the top 100. Uh, thank you, Flavia. Yeah, I just uh, want to, to, to second what uh, Virat has said. Uh, there is no special reason why we should move it up because uh, it does not meet our criteria uh, here in this ex exercise. And, and besides this, if we see the evaluation, Many of the, the reviewers have uh, commented on the fact that it does not have a, a specific focus. It's a very broad discussion on internet governance, and there is no diversity among the participants. So thank you very much. So I, I uh, suggest that we do not retain it, and uh, we advise organizers or proponents of this uh, uh, workshop uh, to uh, engage with the uh, interregional dialogue uh, and uh, see uh, how to channel uh, their ideas and their thoughts in, the, in that discussion. Uh, Michael? When I reviewed this, I thought it was the perfect thing to have a lunch discussion about. Are we going to have mechanisms where people can organize informal lunch talks or this, some, some way to announce, hey, this table, we're going to all talk about a, a particular, maybe regional topic or technical topic? I can, I can tell you that uh, there will be excellent lunch facilities and there will be excellent lunches and that would be up to, up to people to organize themselves. I've seen it work very well though where conference organizers have a bulletin board or have some place that people can post ideas and say, you know, over in the corner talking about DNSSEC. Thank you. Jack? I'm um, sorry, I, th I felt that I needed to clarify. I thought that the session was actually very much focused on ASEAN and ASEAN coming towards a regional economic integration and how this would then impact on internet governance in the region. And I'm speaking about this because I'm also quite familiar with the ASEAN process and what this means in terms of trying to have a sub-regional shared ICT master plan and how then governments and private sector will work together and what is the space for um, other stakeholders to participate in the process. So because of that and also recognize that is a first time proposal, um, which is which then I will provide some leeway in terms of being more um, 
having the experience to be able to write out the, 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 the proposal in a much more tight way. Um, in that sense, I, I thought that it was, this was an important conversation to have, and again, also because of the sub-regional focus. But saying that, I also concede that um, this isn't actually f um, responding to the criteria that we've set for ourselves. And I thought that the idea for lunchtime strategizing conversations was excellent, um, or failing which I would maybe suggest this to be maybe a bit of a further session as well that could be quite useful. So maybe taking into account uh, what just Jack said, we would not retain it as a workshop, but we would we would retain it uh, as a new format of some some kind, and uh, we would ask uh, secretariat to be in touch with the uh, with the proponents and see what kind what kind of conversation could be organised, uh, but outside the formal workshop um, uh, workshop time. Marilyn, you think it's a good idea? I don't. Um, however, I will certainly accept the decision, but I still ask that the, uh, when you read the description, this is a sharing of uh, experience among national uh, IGFs. And so I would ask still that the organizers be encouraged to participate in the interregional national dialogue. I, in, a, I, in addition to whatever else. I, 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 I just saw that Jack took very good note of that and would convey the message. Mark, can we go on? Sorry, uh, just briefly, I, I think it's a good idea um, if, if it also it could be conveyed to the proposers if they could bring in some government participation. And I'm thinking of countries like Vietnam, Korea and Japan that would really make it a very exciting uh, debate. Thank you. So we, we will follow what, what proponents uh, or, or um, uh, uh, MAG member who uh, put this uh, for our consideration suggested that we would look for some innovative uh, format outside the workshops, but we would retain it as in, in, that, in that respect. So uh, it would not go in account of workshops, but uh, we, will, we will work together uh, to uh, bring the information up. And, and certainly what uh, Marilyn said also needs to be taken into account. That is decided. 265. Janis, can we accommodate the uh, remote protest? Uh, yes, sorry, I didn't see them. Uh, okay. Subi. Janis, uh, so two points. I don't support the retention. I do believe this may be a good time to discuss about an open space and make it, maybe we can request the host country to, and we have been making that request each year, to create an open space which is not just lunchtime, but at the VISIS forum, as well as at other ITU initiatives and global forums, um, a special section which has postings and charts, and that is an open space for either people to put up poster sessions or also to hold similar sessions, which is a little more formal than discussing over a lunch table, but sessions such as these would lend themselves really well to that. And I concur with Marilyn's points. This is a fantastic session which can feed in very well into the regional and national initiative dialogue. Thank you. So thank you very much. Now we have um, 265. Who is speaking for this? Michael? Uh, this was one of a handful of ones that I uh, suggested we, we reconsider. Um, again, this is a, a topic that is I don't think well, I represented enough um, on security. Uh, uh, the um, uh, let me pull up the uh, the proposal. Um, I thought the most interesting thing about the evaluations was this was this has an extreme standard deviation with lots of high scores and lots of low scores. Let me let me pull up the evaluation and. Back. Okay. Zendong? Uh, 
Uh, I think the topic is is good, uh, and, and my suggestion is uh, this uh, is from the private sector. If you consider the the, the rest of the issues, uh, I suggest we we can consider that. Thank thank you, Hassan. Thank you, Chair. I uh, second uh, the opinion to uh, keep it. Uh, it is an important topic. It is from private sector as well, and uh, it would bring value to the uh, IGF. Uh, I, th I think that every of 240 proposals would bring value. Bigger value, smaller value, but everything, ev every proposal would bring value. So that is not an argument for, for this particular conversation that we're going through. Uh, diversity under representation of private sector is it is it uh, an issue? We have a statistician in the room, Virat. <laughs> uh, well, Virat, Virat is uh, looking at statistics, uh, Marilyn, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, I I found the proposal quite interesting, but um, I did have one question. I think the list of speakers. Um, on the one hand, the description proposes that um, if you look at the, la the bottom part of the uh, description, as part of this discussion, the session will surface thinking from the Freedom Online Coalition's Working Group on Cybersecurity, the Global Conference on Cyberspace, Mozilla, and the recent experience with the African Union's convention. But when I go down to the speakers, while I do see that um, Mozilla is represented and um, there's a proposal to invite, not yet confirmed, but to invite the Dutch government. Um, I'm, uh, and then there's Cisco and Assert. I'm a little bit concerned about the diversity and think that they could probably um, add in um, an NGO um, or civil society to, to bring some improved balance to it. Otherwise, I think it has a lot of interest for governments, um, and particularly it's interesting to see the uh, focus that they plan to take uh, of examining uh, the role of hacking. Uh, Virat? Mr. Chairman, I it's a private sector proposal, so there is obviously conflict of interest. They are slightly underrepresented, but very difficult to support this proposal to bring it down f up in the last minutes from 147 up. That's what the ranking was. It's not easy to justify that kind of support. Sorry. So thank you, Ephraim. Okay. Um, noting, first wanting to express a conflict of interest, and uh, just wanted to point out that. Uh, I'm from civil society and academia, so, and uh, I'm part of the panel, so just noting that conflict of interest, but I uh, would love this to go forward. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you. I would love all 240 go forward, honestly, <laughs> and actually more than that. Subi, please. Thank you, Anis. So, I have a similar sense of discomfort with the proposal. I believe the proposals are reasonably well connected. There were many proposals from civil society and academia and also from uh, the local host country which were not evaluated uh, highly because they did not have a confirmed list of speakers and I also see lack in diversity of speakers. This is a very, very important issue, but I believe that the proposers had enough resources at their disposal and their command to do enough of an outreach to get confirmations from speakers, and which was also one of the reasons I did not score it um, highly. I, at this moment, I believe we've done a lot to strive for private sector balance and we've provided some proposals. I do not find myself in a position to support this as it is. Thank you. So thank you very much. I, Michael, please. Um, uh, one reason I, I think that there was this large variation, if you look at the, again, if you look at the scores, there were a lot of fives here, as well as a number of ones and twos, and I suspect the ones and twos were because people did not see that these were confirmed speakers, but I suspect if we went back, we'd find that many of these people are lined up. We have somebody here from the African Union, we have a, a large company, a small company, we have 
private the technical community, we have access, which is a, a very important player. So I, I, I thought this was a well-balanced proposal. And aside from the fact that it doesn't say these are confirmed speakers, uh, I was perplexed as to why it was so low. Um, we don't have a lot of small companies proposing things. And as a representative of a small company, uh, I think we should think about adding that diversity as well. So thank you very much. Uh, though uh, I said the, the most probably uh, this is one, one of those 240 that never be uh, organized. But uh, in the context of our conversation today, I, I have not heard convincing arguments why should we pull it up uh, in comparison with others. I would propose not to retain it and uh, to go, go further. And Subi will uh, agree with me. Janice agreed completely, and also the general principle we need same rules for across workshops. I really appreciate the chair's comments. Thank you. So, thank you very much. One twenty eight. So who is proposing this? UNESCO? <coughs> Thank you. <coughs> Actually, when the previous proposal of 151 was discussed, <coughs> I feel quite uh, relieved that uh, because such an important topic uh, on his speech was eventually addressed by the by the IGF since the top 70 is there was missing this topic. Uh, that's because we also organized uh, proposing a similar um, topic on this. We have uh, also a very strong youth uh, focus. And uh, actually, I also like to announce that uh, in UNESCO we are organizing an international conference on online hate speech and um, youth uh, radicalization on 16th and 17th of June with uh, 400 international participants. Uh, you are all welcome to, to join if this interests you. On the other hand, we are commissioning our international uh, global research on the hate speech. Hate speech. Yes, uh, Michael is right that uh, we don't have a, uh, a great uh, definition on hate speech, but that's why we need to discuss it. And it's a global research. We have the cases from all five continents. We try to give a very neutral and comprehensive understanding of the current challenges and provide the recommendations. So thank you very much, Tang uh, Comments, reactions? Mark? Yes, thank you. I, th I think um, there isn't, I do not think there is any additional additionality here. We've, we've got uh, uh, the previous, um, we considered the previous um, uh, proposal on, on hate speech and there's also number 98 in the, in the top 60. So uh, I think we, you know, this topic is well uh, covered in the IGF. Thank you. So thank you, Virat. I support uh, Mark just said to think uh, um, internet government organizations are doing actually quite well. Uh, so we I support the inclusion of the proposal. I think it brings across an important perspective. Uh, though we're doing very well on this uh, balancing active themes, I still think there's room for improvement. I also like the session format in terms of it being a debate, and it's an important perspective. I think we would be able to do a good balancing act with the inclusion, so it does have my support for inclusion. Thank you for your consideration. So thank you. I do not hear more. Uh, I also want to add that we are very flexible. We are always collaborating with all stakeholders. We are happy to, to merge or collaborate with other proposals to make a stronger panel and provide more aspects from our point of view and, and channeling our knowledge into so it. So thank you, Hong Kong. I was not uh, asking you to take a floor. I'm looking to MAG members. I, I, I 
I'm a bit hesitant to make to make decision because I been, I do not feel the temperature in the room. Uh, Avery? <laughs> yeah, thank you. This is Avery speaking. I'd like to add to the temperature of basically going forward with this. I think the perspective on it of the youth radicalization and what is generally going on on the internet makes it a, a very good and different perspective that, that is worth looking at. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Fiona. Yes, I'm not sure this is going to be helpful, but I actually have the opposite view that Davri expressed and would agree with the views of Mark, I think, and uh, Virat on this. I also note that I think that several of the speakers are very similar to the other proposal that came uh, from this uh, group on this, so I'm just not sure what the value add is, and maybe there's a way to add these elements into the other session then. So let me then uh, propose to put it on maybe list for the moment, and uh, we'll see how we do it, uh, uh, how we do further. Maybe. 190. Yanis, could we perhaps uh, accommodate Subi? Uh, Subi already eloquently spoke in favor of that. We, we heard her opinion. Okay. We okay. are starting to run out of time because we need to conclude the list and we still have uh, four to go. Uh, that we can do homework uh, or, or, or statistics uh, and uh, formatting during during the lunch time. Accept. Thank you. One ninety. Who is speaking on one ninety? Michael. Again, I mark this as one of a, a very important a new topic, uh, one that's fundamental if we're going to have any discussion about privacy, cybersecurity, surveillance. The idea that people are putting malware into chips and into pieces of software that then gets incorporated into systems that we all use or that are deployed in critical infrastructure is a very big issue and it is definitely an internet governance issue because we need to be exploring how it um, uh, how, how private sector and government can take action to improve the quality of the supply chain. Uh, I would argue that this should be merged with the other supply chain proposal. Both of them got kind of mediocre scores. Uh, I think combining the two and reevaluating, they would have been evaluated much higher. Although, because it's a new topic, maybe not many people uh, were aware of how, how critical it is. It, um, but I, 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 I strongly urge this uh, inclusion. Uh, it also has uh, confirmed speakers, good quality. So I understand there's a new topic on th those merits as a merging issue. Hassan? Uh, thank you, Chair. It's um, a partially a presentation of the mapping project, the EU mapping project. So again, maybe shortening it a little bit, but it's a good project. Everything is good. Thank you for remembering that. Uh, Virat? I think the idea of merging this with the other one on um, cyber might be a good idea. We could encourage, we've had both are in the sort of hold pattern. We could probably re request the two to sort of speak to each other and get someone to mentor them. Uh, perhaps someone who's recommending that we should merge them should should try and mentor and see if we can bring them together into a single proposal. That's possible. Uh, again, I, I would like to understand reasons why, why we're doing this. They were scored relatively low. Well. I, I understand uh, from Michael that, that uh, according to his opinion, that is uh, something brand new uh, that uh, we need to be aware of. And uh, that's why uh, he, he suggests it should be brought uh, to attention. Uh, th and that would be the only argument that I, I would consider on that, because they are scored relatively low, both, I mean, uh, all four of, of uh, remaining uh, uh, workshop proposals that we will examine. Uh, I will give you a, fl a floor, but uh, uh, Zandong first. 
the the topic is is, is good, uh, but I, I suggest that we really can improve the, the diversity for the panelists. Uh, I think it's a, it, it, this uh, topic can bring some fresh information to this forum. But yeah, that's my opinion. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Chair. I think it's an important topic, and I think it's a new topic, and I think merging that, it says it complements the 157 session, um, and I think if we just merge those two, that's one of the other proposals we still need to evaluate. But in, the, in this abstract, it actually says it complements that other one, so perhaps they can move to one merged. So thank you. Uh, so Um, I very strongly support the inclusion of the topic because of the value that it brings to the table. However, one of the reasons for scoring it low was a not enough concerted effort in including participation and doing outreach and also the complete lack of diversity of speakers. I think um, if we're considering a merger, I support Lynn's idea. It would make sense um, purely because of the value of the topic because it also creates information and a knowledge base for the participants, but I also support the inclusion of developing country experts from an entirely different perspective that will enrich the session. So we need a merger or support for the session. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Virat. Everything that had to be said has been said, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you. Uh, Michael? Uh, just uh, saying that uh, I wouldn't support both 157 and 190, but merging them, I think you get a very strong, diverse panel, and these are both private sector uh, proposals, so I think that that's another plus. So I, I'm, I'm really hesitant. But what I hear is that uh, we, we would uh, uh, favor uh, uh, retaining this on the merits that this is uh, something new that we need to uh, better understand. And um, uh, only on, on that consideration I would uh, uh, propose to retain it, uh, but also with understanding that uh, 190 and 157 would be sort of rewritten, reworked uh, uh, with uh, all, all the aspects we spoke here. Uh, and uh, with that understanding, if with, uh, with your approval, we would retain this merge with 157. And Michael would coach the organizers to, to do a better job. Happy to do so. Thank you. Who is speaking on this? Virat? I do not support retaining this proposal. Uh, we're way in the oversubscribed categories. The speakers are hardly confirmed. Virat, we're not considering yet proposal because it has not been introduced yet. And without introduction, we're not okay. discussing it. So it's not introduced, it's not retained. Thank you. 208. Jack? 
I think this was discussed in also in relation to the workshop on enhancing gender participation last year. So that was discussed in, and that was put in the maybe. Um, but since this has come up again, I'll take the opportunity to make a point of clarification because one of the points raised yesterday was that there was a big cluster of issues that was focusing on women and gender, um, and it was all kind of clumped together. But I think um, there is a distinction between the different types of topics, and this made sense um, to connect to the one that was discussed yesterday, I don't remember the number, on um, enhancing gender participation because it is about participation into internet governance processes and it's not a specific issue around, say, um, safety, security, privacy or violence. So um, I will defer, the, defer this back to the conversation that we had yesterday. So thank you. You suggest that this should be proposed to merge with a similar topic. Well, that this not merge, but to then look at speakers here to contribute to the to the workshop session. I, I wish I remember the number. The workshop session on gender participation yesterday, but then the workshop session yesterday to also see if they can work with the gender dynamic coalition um, in the pro in the proposal. So, uh, Marilyn? Thank you, Chair, for the opportunity to recall our conversation yesterday. I believe the workshop uh, number is 228, and I think I was the person who proposed um, merging the two, which I think will strengthen uh, both of them. Uh, I also uh, I appreciate the suggestion that workshops work with dynamic coalitions, but I think that has to be up to uh, the workshops. Dynamic coalitions really have other uh, broader purposes. So 228 and 208 was what I had in my notes that we consider for merging. Uh, indeed, that, that is uh, our decision yesterday. Um, we put 228 maybe with a potential merger with 208 and uh, uh, linkage with the dynamic coalition. So uh, you know, on that grounds, we would not retain it specifically, uh, but we would consider it uh, in the next round with a, and a category maybe that we will be looking at. So uh, we have exhausted uh, proposed uh, workshops by MAG members. And uh, what we need to do now is uh, to work on uh, the, uh, the scoring. And this is what Secretariat will do during the lunchtime and would bring uh, the updated uh, list of retained workshops uh, in on one sheet. And then uh, the category may be on other sheet. And uh, we will still need to see, de depending on how many uh, sessions remaining we would have, we would uh, talk about uh, maybe. That shouldn't take more than one hour for, of uh, afternoon session and that would then conclude our consideration of the workshops. But I would like also to, to suggest that um, uh, we, we would draw the line uh, uh, here during the meeting, but uh, we would maintain the lists of um, uh, ranked in, in the priority order. And then uh, Secretariat, if there will be a situation that uh, some uh, time will be available, would take the next best uh, score from, from this maybe list, which would not make uh, uh, in, at the, at the, uh, in the main list. And also, as we uh, introduced practice, and it has been practice uh, also in the past, Secretariat would, um, MAG would allow Secretariat leeway for maybe uh, one, two, but not certainly more than three workshops in case uh, to put it in the program at Secretariat's discretion. There might be situations uh, that we do not know there might be mistakes, there might be uh, very serious political considerations ne uh, that need to be taken into account, and uh, Secretariat uh, will act with the full responsibility uh, 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 on those uh, very, very few uh, workshops. I hope that this, this will be uh, meet with understanding and acceptance. Now I have number flags up. I will start with Susan. 
Um, <clears throat> thank you, Chair. And that last point, I, I would also um, support some understanding and acceptance in those um, marginal situations. But I'm just recalling the experience of last year um, where we did um, introduce workshops um, for the, the local host um, after uh, I, I think there are about a number of five workshops um, after we had completed our evaluations and for the purposes of clarity I was just wondering what the procedure would be this year. Uh, the difference between last year and this year is that uh, a host country has uh, put uh, enough proposals uh, and they have been uh, evaluated uh, alongside with others. I think we have retained a number of uh, proposals coming either from Brazil or uh, CGI. Uh, some of them were not retained. Uh, but uh, so we will not have a situation when host country will come uh, after with uh, uh, new proposals and, and would say we want to organize this and that. So uh, that, that, uh, that will not happen. You see, you see Benedicto is not, yes. not nodding yes. and, and then can confirm that. Yeah. No, just to yeah, confirm what has been said by uh, Yanis, I think all the proposals are on the table. Just to uh, recall that there is a proposal also to have a main session uh, on uh, the Net Mundial uh, not the Net Mundial Initiative on Net Mundial. Uh, so this is something uh, I'm not sure if we'll have time to go through in the course of the day. Mm -hmm. But uh, and, and on top of that, we still have to organize the Day Zero uh, event. I think those are the basically what we are looking at. Thank you. So thank you, Marilyn. Thank you, Chair. I just had a two points. I had a quick question for the Secretariat because I had actually given them um, another workshop proposal. That was 231, which didn't make it on the list. I'm happy to just have that clarified. Let me go on to my second point while they're looking at that. Um, there has also been a proposal to uh, consider the development of a main session on sustainable development and the digital economy, and I still want to uh, promote that that is an important thing to uh, work on. Hussam and I are both interested, and I think um, Ephraim and others, so uh, if we could maybe after lunch uh, re-explore that as well. So on uh, 2.31, I'm looking to call. Uh, So that was uh, uh, Secretariat's uh, mistake. It's good that Secretariat acknowledges that uh, all of us are human and only those who do nothing never make mistakes. It happens. Chair, may I, may I make a very quick point about the workshop then? And I will make it quick. The workshop uh, is of particular interest, I think, because it brings in uh, participation that today is very low, and that is participation from um, the SME private sectors from the uh, MENA region and some of the other regions. It also has a unique format in that uh, it's going to be conducted in uh, uh, the way it's written up, it's going to be conducted in um, in the same room, but in small clusters of uh, groups working together with a moderator for each table, and then come back together. And that is a very unique um, unique approach. It is, I want to note, it is from the private sector, so uh, folks may feel that that means, since I'm also from the private sector, I have a conflict. But because of the uniqueness of the format and the uh, opportunity to bring in uh, participation from the Arab states, I wanted to mention it. So, uh, well, well uh, you're considering what, what Marilyn just said, um, I, I would like to um, uh, tell you that uh, Cengitai right now is sending you the revised proposal for main sessions that you can, uh, that you can uh, look at during uh, lunchtime and you will see uh, that there are uh, proposed uh, three uh, slots uh, for uh, thematic conversations, thematic uh, uh, discussions. Uh, we have now proposal um, 
related to uh, sustainable development and internet economy. Uh, we will consider that uh, af after uh, finishing a review of workshops, and hopefully we will agree uh, at least uh, p uh, on, on that one, if not on others. Uh, equally, we will be dealing with the remaining agenda after the uh, what, what, what is on our agenda, meaning uh, dynamic coalitions, uh, regional, interregional dialogue, uh, next steps. Uh, it is uh, whether we have third meeting and whether we have uh, that meeting as a mag meeting or that is a meeting of uh, editorial group uh, and every other uh, initiative, intersessional initiative. So that will be in the afternoon. Now, uh, would, would uh, everybody uh, want to uh, examine 231? Uh, apart that this is a very good proposal, uh, I am not sure that that brings, uh, that meets criteria of balancing, uh, unless a balancing on the region, geographic balancing, that, that is only, I heard, might be a, a case. Uh, those who wanted to speak not on this topic, please put, put flags down. I, I noted uh, those speakers uh, on this particular topic. Lynn. I think it does um, give us additional um, diversity from a regional perspective, but one of the things we see across the Internet Governance Forums, frankly, despite the high quality of the representation from the private sector, is a, a, a fair dearth of representation from private sector. So if this helps pull more private sector participation in from a region, particularly in the small and medium size, I would support that. So thank you. Uh, other comments? Mark? Thanks. I, I agree with that point. Um, what I, I thought was missing here was the, the connection to, the, to our main themes of sustainable development. Could we have a private sector focus on that in this session? Uh, uh, so, I, if, if that were the case, you know, I would support, certainly. Can I just float that as a proposal? So, thank you. Uh, other comments? For information, the overall ranking of this proposal is 111. So, I see, I see that... Uh, uh, we can put it maybe on maybe list for the moment and then uh, look through uh, at the at the end uh, on this topic subi thank you uh, for the other interventions i will wait for my turn and i will pop that but on this workshop two points one i completely second mark Covell's points it needs to link up better with our team and second it says the role of governments um i don't see too many so if we're looking at retention and you popped it in the maybe list we also need to enhance uh, diversity on stakeholder participation from governments into the session too thank you so thank you very much so with that we retain it on maybe list and uh, we will uh, examine it together with other maybes uh, at the beginning of the next session. Can I just ask a clarify? It's got two governments on it. Can I just ask Subi to clarify? Uh, it's got Costa Rica and the U.S. We, we will not uh, go further than that. Uh, we will uh, talk about this proposal next, uh, next session. This is on the maybe list for the moment. Uh, now, on um, clarifying questions, there was Virat, and then Subi, and then Mark. Mr. Chairman, on the, on the main sessions, as I recall, there were actually nine requests for main sessions. Uh, as we took from the, from the floor, and I noted them down at that time, there was one for net neutrality, there is one for surveillance, encryption, role of governments, regional and national IGFs, um, internet economy, Net Mundial and, and sustainable development. So we just want to make sure that we uh, take the five or six that are making the cut. I think f I think of these about four or five uh, still survived. These were the ones that were floated. Uh, I don't think 
all of them will be drawn, so I just want to park them there. Uh, I, I know we don't have space for all of them, but I just want to record what was stated when, when the discussion was going on. The second is uh, uh, when the Secretariat presents the list of the retained and the maybes, um, which will, I guess, cut off at 100 uh, after lunch, it would help if they could also give us a quick insight into the uh, ratios of the sub-themes, um, developing countries, first-timers, formats and, and, and stakeholder groups, because that will help us uh, pick or leave uh, from the maybe group in case we're trying to address some additional imbalances at that time. So along with the list, these five pieces of information would be extremely helpful. Thank you. So that will be done. Uh, Subi? Thank you, Chair. Um, I was a, hoping that we will have a substantive discussion if we can make time on main sessions so that we can close on confirmations and also facilitators. I would also like to have uh, more engagement with uh, other MAG members and people who are online to volunteer as facilitators, especially new MAG members and members of the youth for main sessions. And I'm glad that some of the other proposals for main sessions are not getting lost in translation. Um, I recall about five more proposals for main sessions. I understand that we do not wish to fill in all the slots, but it, I, it would be helpful if we know what the rationale is going to be for retaining some main sessions and not the others. Um, and I do want to articulate support for a session on the role of governments and what's in it for them at the IGF and also defining and revisiting rightful roles and responsibilities of stakeholders from Tunis to Brazil. Um, and the third thing, I'm very happy that our Brazilian hosts are enhancing participation of the youth. I do hope to see in large numbers the local community uh, representing the success and replicating the success of engagement from the floor um, when it comes to participation in the main sessions as well as in other workshop formats. So I, I think there might also be time for a, a greater engagement in terms of expectations of support when it comes to main sessions from the host country, but we'll park that conversation for later. Thank you. So thank you, Subi. Uh, based on what you said, may I ask Secretariat also during the lunchtime to circulate the list of uh, all proposals on uh, themes for main sessions, thematic themes for main sessions? that we, we have uh, one list that we could, we could look through, hopefully agree on um, a proposed uh, frame for main sessions and topics, uh, and um, so that would be helpful. I'll, I'll provide please. whatever I have on my list to the Secretary after this meeting. That, that would be very helpful, thank you. Mark, you are the last one in this session. Yes, thank you, Chair. I, I, I believe you agree to um, uh, that the MAG would consider the Dutch government's requests uh, th from Arnold von Rijn earlier on with regard to uh, workshops 24 and uh, 48, that the MAG would, would respond with its views on those two proposals. I, I do have comments on those proposals. Thank you. Yeah, so, so uh, I, my understanding was not uh, simply that there was a question what happened with those proposals. And uh, uh, the Secretariat suggests that uh, proposal 24 was uh, had a, a overall ranking 148, and uh, proposal 48 was overall ranking 183. They were very good proposals, but they did not make uh, uh, top top 70. And uh, uh, no MAG member uh, suggested that uh, they should be examined uh, in the framework of this balan balancing exercise that we did. As a result, they were not discussed uh, uh, alongside with others that we, 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 we took up. So I, that, that is the answer to, uh, to the question. And thank you for reminding uh, that the, the, uh, we, we had to respond to that. Uh, please, Arnold. Arnold van der Rijn, um, yes, correct spelled. I'm speaking on behalf of the Netherlands uh, um, IGF, and uh, I would not like to shorten your lunch time, and certainly not the valuable work of the MAC uh, today, uh, but I was asked by the, uh, the Netherlands IGF to make the following statement. 
in many occasions, like during um, the IGF and other global internet-related meetings, it was emphasized to have a strong interaction between the national and regional IGFs and the global IGF. From the beginning of its existence, Anal IGF uh, is contributing to that goal by firstly participating with a large multi-stakeholder delegation, one of the largest in the IGF meetings, and secondly, by organizing workshops for IGF meetings on key emerging issues that are well prepared in cooperation with relevant stakeholders. Concerning the two workshop proposals which LIGF has sent in, ID numbers 24 and 48, I have to ex express on behalf of the Netherlands IGF my disappointment about the low ranking of these proposals. Lots of work, time and energy has been put into it with the involvement of many different stakeholders. Panelists have been invited on con or confirmed, including members of parliament. The MAC criteria for the workshop proposals have been taken into account to the extent possible with respect to gender and geographical participation, participation of the developing countries and other requirements. Looking at the content of the proposals, we feel that the topics are new key emerging uh, issues. At least they are in the Netherlands. That's why we have scheduled a separate full day workshop in our country on uh, 24th of June solely on the issue of ethics in relation to uh, Internet of Things. That's workshop proposal 48. And during our yearly uh, Netherlands IGF meeting on 1st of October, debate sessions are planned on the two issues, ethics in relation to Internet of Things and privacy as innovation. This in preparation for the IGF in Brazil. And this will now probably have to change. What can we do more as a national IGF community? That's what I'm asking you. Is there still a possibility to have a merger with ag other agreed proposals for workshops? I would kindly ask the member MAC members to look into that, if possible. Thank you very much. So thank, uh, thank you, Arnold. Um, ben Dichter, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, uh, what, what I'd like to propose in the light of what was stated by the Netherlands is that uh, I, I understand that maybe an opportunity was lost to include those two workshops in the list we have been examining uh, from the perspective, as I understand, of some emerging issue that was not addressed adequately in the other workshops and could be seen by that light. So what I'd like to propose when we resume in the afternoon, in case there is still room to to, to accommodate, uh, uh, that those uh, should be also taken up by us uh, and in, in the light of this. Uh, the issue of ethics is one that we certainly would like very much to, to see highlighted. Indeed, I'd like just to recall that UNESCO is uh, undertaking a very serious study on those matters uh, that is due to be approved by the next General Assembly later on in the year, and Brazil is very much supportive of that. So we think that could be add value, uh, well, everything could add value, but we'd like to, if possible, that those two issues could come forward uh, later on, if possible. Thank you. So thank you very much. Uh, and uh, let me, let me uh, maybe respond to this um, uh, statement. Uh, as I mentioned, unfortunately we have limitations. Uh, we would be very glad to have 240 workshops going on uh, and uh, we, would, we would like to have every uh, who is interested in internet governance issues be present in, in IGF and in, from that perspective I would like uh, still to encourage um, uh, Dutch in, uh, IGF community or internet community uh, participate in large numbers including bringing um, uh, members of parliament, um, high officials uh, to, uh, to the IGF and uh, uh, thanking for all support the uh, Netherlands has given so far uh, to IGF and um, uh, internet governance in general. Um, th that said, we, we, uh, we need to be cognizant of these, these uh, limitations and uh, I, I think uh, Secretariat took note on, on, on request and maybe we'll uh, uh, look in the relevant uh, workshops where, uh, and suggest to organizers to uh, invite uh, Dutch uh, participants uh, to contribute to them. Uh, to those uh, workshops uh, and uh, we will do our best to
to accommodate uh, most we can in the best possible way. So that said, uh, we uh, need to release interpreters because they are hungry, and if they are hungry, they will not translate correctly what we are saying. Thank you very much. Uh, we have a few um, uh, 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 people wishing for the floor, and but very quickly, Virat and then Michael. Mr. Chairman, I was going to say that uh, if we have accepted this process of individual MAG members sponsoring um, uh, proposals which went beyond 100, and we've done it for a day and a half, then I think Netherlands should receive a non-discriminatory treatment. Uh, there's somebody who's suggesting that we should put them through the exact same process. They should not suffer because they were not in the room yesterday and the, in the two hours that we had to provide this. So I support uh, the need for a non-discriminatory treatment for these two as well. And in fact, that would hold good for anybody who could find a proposal. So let's at least do these two. Thank you. Michael. Uh, I would uh, also agree with uh, Virat. Um, I, I, I almost supported number 48 as one of my f five or six candidates for consideration because I'm one of the futurists here. Uh, I, at some point, I'd like a longer discussion about the bias against forward-looking proposals. There's a tendency not to talk about these vague future things when there are so many current problems, and, and that's reflected in the, in the rankings. So I, I, I think we should spend time looking at, 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 the, at least Proposal 48. Uh, we, we have emerging issues uh, on the agenda, so that is where future, futuristic things need to be discussed. And those proposals got very low ratings, and many people gave them one, one, one. Look, with that, with that in mind, uh, Suvi, but please very briefly. Thank you, Chair, for allowing the intervention. Two things. Uh, I support the fact that if you're not in the room, uh, you should not be disadvantaged. It gives me a sense of discomfort, but having said that, and looked at the history of participation of national and regional IGFs, which tend to get lumped into one large session, which gets reduced further to, this is what I did during my IGF. I think this is an important issue, and if a national initiative is proposing a workshop, we should give it due consideration. I haven't uh, yet proposed any workshop for reconsideration. If it is not too late as a MAG member, I'd like to articulate my support if we can spend some time and look at workshop number 48 in particular, not 24, but 48. And thank you for allowing the intervention, Chair. Thank so thank, thank you very much. Uh, specifically, uh, 48 was mentioned. Um, may I suggest that we put it on maybe list without examining and then looking, looking at it together with others. I see nothing. 48 is on the maybe list. And we will look at those uh, in, the, in the afternoon. So thank you very much. Please come back at uh, 3 o'clock sharp because we have a lot of things to do and uh, you will get all information during lunchtime. Bon appétit.